Hello, friends. <laughs> it's always at the last moment that tech refuses to work. I check everything, I check all the boxes, and then the mic refuses to work. So you have to flip a switch uh, to make it all to make it all come together. Hey, everybody, how's it happening with you out there in the internet? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you all for joining us. My name is Matt, and we're here to play more Alien RPG. Um, it's been a favorite around here for a long time, so I'm hoping we continue to uh, to make it one of your favorites. A raid around me. I have some awesome players, some of whom are brand new as of this episode. Oh uh, yeah, that's the way it works around here. Um, we're gonna introduce uh, everybody uh, and uh, where you could potentially find them on the internet. Uh, starting with uh, this lady right here to my direct right. Uh, and, and that's Julie. Julie, go ahead and tell everybody where you can be found on the internet. I'm Julie. You can find me on Discord as Trist in Twitch chat. The Twitch chat stream. Wow, words, order, not tonight, apparently. <laughs> um, in there, you'll see me as Catalia. And in here, you see me as your pilot, Davis. Not quite the Maverick type. A little something different. Got dinosaurs there? Were those dinosaurs? Yes, they're little dinosaurs. Okay. Way too expensive for what they are. I know. I know exactly what. Yeah, those dinosaurs. You you buy them at Michaels, and they're perfectly cheap. But um, get them on like Amazon. They didn't even have any at the dollar store. How dare they? Like a leaf on the wind. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue, Ben. Uh, ben, perfect. Right below Julie is her adorable husband, Ben. Ben, where can people find you on the adorable. internet? Adorable. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Discord as Ironhead four five four. On the same, pretty much anywhere else you can find me. TikTok. Um, yeah. Cool. YouTube. That's about it. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I I am your uh well I guess I'm not a mechanic. I'm your electrician, Kayla Rye. <laughs> Do you belong to a, a He's a, a cute one. An electrician's guild or something like that? I don't know. Yep, yep. I belong to a electrician's guild. Local, specifically uh, for, for females. <laughs> uh it, it just the way that you said that, Ben. Uh, I know you're playing a, a female character, it's just funny the way you said it. It's totally fine. Um yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ben. Uh, moving down to the gent below me directly. That's, uh, well, he's got he's got more than one name. I, I, sometimes I don't even know what to call him sometimes. It's either Andy or it's Rick or it's Rick Andy. Andy Rick? I, I don't know. Uh, tell us who you really are, sir, and where you can be found on the internet. Uh, my name's Andy, um, known as Rick O'Shea. Uh, if you can find me, it's going to be on Discord in the Slices and Dices Discord. Or in the Alien RPG Discord. Both amazing places to be. Speaking of which, let me just go into chat to make sure that the people who are here in Discord have an ability to get on. Go ahead and click on that link if you're in chat. You'll get right onto our Discord. If you're watching this at YouTube, you'll find the Discord link in the doobly doo, as they call it. Is that what the kids are calling it? Skibbity doobly doo something? Close do -do. enough. Yeah, I don't even know. That's fine. Um, super. And then, uh, we have a brand new face here on Slices, um, and that is Sean. Sean, who's coming in with, like, 24 hours to, uh, uh, you know, to spare here. Um, uh, so, massive ringer. Thank you so much, Sean, for coming in, um, and playing a new character, a uh, new person on channel. We just, we, we did this so fast, it made my head spin. But, yes, tell everybody... New person who this. Yes, exactly. Tell everybody who you are and where can you uh, be found upon the internet. So, uh, I am Sean. I'm just coming in clutch, so hopefully I don't die too quickly tonight. Uh, but I can be found on Discord as Minky11B because, of course, I am better than Ironhead because I'm a soldier, not a jarhead. <laughs> oh, boy. And it begins. There we go. This is... Uh, You'll I, pay later. I, I really hope that you guys actually are rivals in the game and not just rivals in real life because that would make this so much uh, sweeter and, 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 and more... Um, just, just more, more lasting, right? 
just want this to be last. Like the game ends, and then like you get little, sh- little, little, little shit thrown across your yard. Hey, <laughs> hey, I only died once in that alien game last night, motherfucker. And next, my thoughts right? the whole time as I go after Iron Head. <laughs> uh-huh. You're going down, dude. Going down. <laughs> um. Super. And then finally, uh, we have a perennial favorite here on the channel, of course, Red Platinum, who has deigned to change his awesome background for our awesome game. Thank you so much, Red. Tell everybody where you can be found on the internet, please. Uh, you can find me at different places, though, most likely as with everybody else here in our Discord, where I post about whatever games I can get into and backstories for all my characters. But... The backstory for this character is he's a corporate liaison. So the one person that I think everybody hates, except for the other corporate liaisons, probably. Yeah. But then again, maybe. <laughs> Listen, um, if you happen, if your character happens to die, you can just sort of just flip into the other corporate liaison and just continue on being, you know, a dick. Uh, I mean, the character, not you, right? I mean, so like. What I don't think the the corporate liaison is called Richard though. Mm, that's an old joke. Yeah, that's an that's an old one. Although I did say that to my kid the other day um, because I, there was a. I mean, I didn't say di- I didn't call him a dick. Oh my God! I, okay, let me say this again. <clears throat> I used the name Dick, and my son said he's nine. He's like, Dad, come on! I, I, I'm right here. You can't use that kind of of language i go no no no. his name is dick <laughs> and he got really upset um and then i had to explain how people made really bad choices with names long ago and still do to this day but that's okay um we're we're just gonna ignore that and move on all right are you guys ready to play some alien rpg the music is with us now we just have to get in the zone, get in the mood, and go with Act 2. I don't know why it says Act 1. I'm going to change that. Um, I'll probably have to change it. Uh, can I change that? Let me see. Let me check. Yep. Oh. Uh, can I change that? I'll have to change that in post. I'll put a little border on it that says Act 2, not Act 1. Um, something I forgot to do, of course. Me being me, I forgot to put the Dude, freaking break. thing. Do it in the break. I'll switch it over to Act 2 and break. All right, so let's go ahead and go with the recap of what happened in the first act of Alien RPG, Chariot of the Gods. The USS Montero, a company licensed towing and salvaging vessel, was traveling through deep space with a literal gold mine of precious gases and metals trailing behind it. This gold mine was in the form of enormous tanks of tritium, which is an extremely valuable gas utilized in uh, the processing of various energies and various uh, uh, sort of futuristic um, um, processes and, and, and actions. Suffice it to say, tritium is extremely rare and it is also extremely valuable. You as crew members were awakened from hypersleep by Mother, the central AI that ran your craft. And eager to be done with this run and collect a paycheck, you, the crew of the Montero, woke up to prepare the ship for unloading for your destination, the colony world of Sutter's World. You gathered in the galley to eat and chat. However, through a quick inspection of the star charts... You determined that you were nowhere to be near your intended destination and that the darkness of space and the insufficient information from your star charts indicated that you were in the deepest regions of unknown and undiscovered space. Checking in with Mother, Vanessa Miller, the ship's captain, learned that a distress signal from a nearby spacecraft was the reason for your untimely awakening. With some quick piloting skills, Leah Davis, the craft's pilot, was able to narrowly keep the Montero from crashing into that spacecraft in question, a derelict spacecraft that hadn't been seen in over 70 years. Captain Miller learned from Mother that the ship called the USCCS Cronus 
was the source of the dis uh, sorry USCSS Cronus was the source of the distress signal and that you were under orders by the company aka Whalen Yutani What's up Whalen yeah um and that a salvage operation was mandated by company rules company agent John Wilson of course was on board to ensure that way you policies are followed to the letter your priorities were to, one, recover scientific data and samples from the Cronus, two, escort the Cronus to Anchorhead or another Wayu facility, and of course, three, if at all possible, save crew members on the Cronus if they were still alive. After a failed attempt to attach the umbilical to the dark and powerless craft, you decided that it was only necessary to spacewalk to the airlock and force it open. After engineer Kayla Rye was almost sucked into space, she was able to brute strength the door uh, to the vessel open, and the five of you boarded it to discover what lay within. Each member of the team split up into smaller groups to investigate. While roughneck Lyron Cham moved to the reactor to try to reactivate it, Miller and Davis went to the bridge, and Wilson and Rye headed to the cryobase. Now, outside the cryobase, Wilson and Rye found a headless body with horrible, distended limbs and frozen blood splayed about the corridor. Clearly, something horrible had happened here. Within the cryobase, several people were still in stasis. And now, while investigating the bridge, all of a sudden... Mother came online, powering up the reactor and the life support systems, perhaps as a reaction to you, the new presences on board the Cronus. The temperature increased, air scrubbers activated, and lights began to turn on. As a result of the life support systems coming online, the sleeping crew of the Cronus awoke from their hypersleep in the cryo chambers and began to interact with you, the crew of the Montero. Now, the crew of the Cronus, at least those that are left, were four in total. We have second officer Albert Johns, medic Liam Flynn, scientist Daniel Cooper, and company agent Laurie Clayton. A uh, fifth member of the crew, Colonial Marine Reed, unfortunately seems to have died in cryosleep. And now, when the crew of the Cronus woke, they seemed to suffer temporary amnesia and acute disorientation, most likely from the long time in stasis. Dr. Cooper, for one, actually complained of very sharp headaches uh, immediately after awakening. They clearly needed some kind of medical attention. Now, while all this was occurring, Lyron Cham discovered horrible globule-like eggs, which seemed to have grown all over the cargo bay and the reactor. And as he investigated, we saw, but he did not, a massive shape dropping from a hole in the ceiling onto the floor behind him. And that is the last we see of poor Cham. Speaking of poor ends, Dr. Cooper back in the cryo bay began complaining of massive migraines. And before long, he began to speak incoherently, muttering uh, nonsense and, and beginning to froth and seize and throwing himself all over the cabin. At once, spraying blood all over, the good doctor's head split apart birthing a horrid monstrosity which fell onto the floor from his skull with a plop. Johns began to scream, Kill it! Kill it! which echoed through the cryo bay as this terrible, eyeless, alien thing crouched and screeched at all those present. And that is where we begin tonight. Now, there are a couple things that we need to make sure we do before we begin this, what seems to be a combat here in Alien RPG. Those of you who um, 
kept their helmets on are still using your air supply. Those of you who removed them once the air supply began on the ship, you don't need to worry about that. But those of you who stayed their helmets on are going to need to roll air supply twice more. And I think, if I'm correct, that that is Rye and Miller, am I right? Is that correct? Yeah, that sounds about right. Super. All right, so go ahead and roll air supply, gentlemen, two more times for me. If you get a panic or a, a one on your D6s, uh, that will remove one air supply per panic. All right, so Vanessa Miller, although you chat, you guys can't see it. Um, Vanessa Miller rolled one panic, so uh, her air roll, uh, her air supply goes down from five to four. And then Rye, your turn. Yeah, it's not clicking. It's not clicking. Do you do you have it on a separate screen? Maybe with a modifier? Yes. That's the reason why. You'll probably see on the main oh, screen it asks yeah. you for a modifier. Just don't put a modifier yeah. in. And then it should come up. And we got one success is no panic, so you retain four air. Okay. I'm, second roll? Yeah, the second roll was, I think, maybe a mistake. Okay. So let me move. Um, I guess we'll just start off... Uh, Start off the old-fashioned way. Now, those of you who can see the screen will now see uh, that uh, Miller and Davis are actually at the bridge. Um, the life support systems are now flashing green. There seems to be air scrubbing and, and air uh, filtering through the cabin. And so because of that, I'm going to give everybody on this ship um, light within the entire ship, which means I'm going to activate daylight mode. Those of you in areas um, which have, uh, obviously, uh, blockages with, with walls and stuff, you won't be able to see through the whole ship, but you'll certainly be able to see uh, within the, uh, the confines of where you are currently. So there you go. The lights have turned on, folks. You're able to see everything around you without having to worry about the lights on your, uh, on your, on your, uh, uh, on your suits. Okay. Now, where the action is, is not here, however, folks. It's down in Cryo Bay 1. Let me see if I can find I the y'all. doors got closed on us. Uh-oh. Well, let me find you first. Let me zoom out. Let me zoom out. Oh, there you are. Okay, let me find you. Should I ping? <laughs> oh, you don't need to ping, because that won't matter. All right, I have found you. And we're going to shift ping. Now, um, I have Dr... Um, uh, Dr. Nohead here, unfortunately, he's, he's in red. Um, and yes, that, that is correct. This door should be opened, and it should show Lori, uh, the company agent here, and the dead Marine here, also in red. But we have a new friend who's joined us, and that is the thing that came um, after, uh, out of Dr. Cooper's head. And you spy this horrid thing on, this gr on the ground. It sort of wobbles about on uh, uh, spindly legs, uh, four legs. It has a long uh, tail um, that extends probably twice its length. It has no eyes. It has a pure black carapace um, that, that covers uh, most of its head and a mouth full of needle-like chrome teeth. And it sort of looks up at the closest individual closest to him, and I believe that's that's you, Rye. Um, and it just it it just screeches at you. Um, here, let me give you a little little FX. <laughs> and uh, I guess it's time to uh, to roll a little initiative. Now we roll initiative here on Slices and Dice. We don't give out the cards, <coughs> but we might as well. Uh, start off with with a bang. Everybody can roll d10s, and once you do, we'll add you to the turn orders. Now, I'm suggesting, by the way, that the combat may not necessarily be relegated to the people in the room, because I think Miller and um, and Davis, although you can certainly, you know, use your actions to run through the ship to where the rest of the people are, um, you could be part of this combat potentially uh, as well. So I'll ask uh, that if you guys want to to roll, we'll, we'll get you into the turn order here. Now, if there are duplicates of numbers, such as, for example, Wilson and Miller, uh, Miller, you will need to re-roll because we won't accept a duplicate here. <clears throat> okay, there we go, a three. Uh, that, unfortunately, was uh, was Rise uh, roll. So, one more time. 
Hopefully, you won't get somebody else's. There we go, an eight. Okay, cool. All right, so Davis got a... Davis got a five. Miller got a an eight. And let me just go down to our friends down here in the cryo lab. Guys, there you guys are. And add you to the turn order. Now, thing about aliens, most aliens in fact, is that they don't get just one turn. They sometimes have a speed that indicates that they have multiple turns in the turn order. And in this case, our friendly little alien buddy here has a speed of three, which means he gets three opportunities to do some things. So I'm gonna add him three times. Okay. And we are here. Okay. Let me check to see. Okay, so we have everybody coming up. Um, Johns, did you roll as well? I think so. Yeah, you rolled a two, correct? Yeah, you did. You got a two. And Wilson, you got a seven. I think we got everybody. Leah Davis, Vanessa Miller, Albert Johns, John Wilson... I think that's it. Rye. Oh my gosh, Kayla Rye. How could I forget? Yeah, how can you forget the one that's probably about to be attacked? She got a three. Cute. Too cute to fight. <laughs> adorable. Too cute to fight. Absolutely. So let me just now roll not for. Too cute to die. <laughs> Rye, die. <laughs> they all sound the same. All right, so let's, I'm going to roll three more times for our friendly little alien guy here once. And uh, that is a 10, that's good for you guys. And twice, uh, a four, that's bad for some, good for others. And then finally, a one, that's super oh. bad. That means that the thing will go first. Okay. Let me go ahead and go ascending, like yet. And bring this onto the board so that Chad can see it. So that's what we've got for our turn order here, folks. We've got the creature going first. Now, alien attacks go like this, in case you haven't uh, had the chance to remember. Uh, aliens have a random set of six potential attacks. So I will roll a d6 to see what this thing wants to do. I rolled a five. Usually, higher numbers are, are worse than lower numbers. So let's see what a five is on this creature. Uh, well, hmm, that's interesting. That is a leg bite. Which looks like, yep, so this creature screeches, moves through the zone towards you, Kayla, just rah, like that, and then rolls one success on her leg bite, doing two damage. With a snarl, this creature bites your leg. If the attack causes right. any damage, it automatically inflicts critical injury 53. Even if the victim is not broken, triggering an immediate panic roll. So it does two damage. But we do have armor. You do. So roll that armor roll, please. Yeah, let me figure out where it is. It's in the middle towards the bottom of your character sheet. You can click on it and then make sure that, uh, it, again, the, the modifier will come up on the screen. You don't have any modifiers to armor. So go ahead and roll it. And let's see if you get any successes. You're going to need two successes. You got zero successes. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Um. So, yeah. <laughs> critical, critical injury 53. Let's see what that is. I'm looking in my little rules here under critical injuries. Critical injury 53 is a leg artery cut. So, this is bad. This is a fatal injury. Um with a uh, a time of one turn, so that's 10 minutes. Um, the uh, action here, unfortunately, is that um, you will take the two damage. I don't know how much uh, actual health you have, but taking two damage doesn't matter because you're automatically broken, and to run anywhere becomes a slow action. 
Recovery from this is D6 days. Let me roll and see how many days this will take for you to recover. Three days to recover from this. That is its turn. Albert Johns, it is now your turn. What do you want to do? <clears throat> well, since I just woke up from the cryo tubes and having known that these creatures were on the ship beforehand, I stashed my service pistol under my pillow in the cryo tube. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to shoot the little bastard. Okay, as you grab for your gun underneath your pillow and your cryo tube, your hand comes away with not just your gun, but something else because chat has redeemed a piece of gear. That's the cool thing about being here on Slices. Our chat can actually make your lives easier or worse, depending on what, how they want to spend their points. But in this case, they are definitely going to give you an extra piece of gear um, as given to you by Maeve Clymer. Thank you so much, Maeve, in chat. So go ahead and, for me, please, to find out what you get, roll a d10. All right. A two. All right, let me check my little table here of gear. Uh, that is a stun baton. Which I'm gonna All grab, right. I'm gonna grab that from the compendium and I'm gonna put it onto your character sheet so you have that possibility as well. So Johns has a pistol and he will also have a stun baton. Yep. Let me grab that, put that into your armaments. And there you go. You've got a stun baton as well as a service pistol in your character sheet. All right, awesome. I am still going to go ahead. I'm going to hold on to that stun baton. And I'm still going to sh try to shoot the little guy. All right, go for it. I got a, a second. one success. Uh, I don't see that coming through. Did that come through on roll 20, guys? Oh, wait, maybe. No, that's strange. It didn't come through at all. Have you got it on? looks like it went to just you. Oh, that is true. It DM did come whispers. through to me. Yes, that is correct. I will change that because John's had uh, DM whispers on. Let me turn that off. Easily done. Yeah, never whisper to GM. That way the chat can see it. And yes, one success, one damage. Question, do you want to push that roll and potentially get more damage on the roll? Up to you. Uh, what the hell? Why not? Let's do it. Let's go. Make it happen. All right, so there we go. Now it's coming through on chat. Two successes rather than one. Two is better than one. So that's two damage. Now this creature does have armor, of course, so it's going to roll its armor roll against that. And let's see what happens. Ah, uh, there is it. Sorry, folks. It's in the way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it if I can. Where are you? There aren't doors in the way. There we go. Now it's it's uh, it's like here. It's like in the way. So you you would still have a beat on it. I'll put it like right there. That's fine. All right. Here we go. Armor roll. One success. So it only does one damage to the thing. Okay. So you line up your shot. And you watch as the bullet certainly hits it, and you see like a little spattering of some kind of awful blood-like fluid that sort of uh, emits onto the floor next to it. And as it hits the floor, there is a hissing sound, and this horrible stench, Rye, comes up. Now, Rye, as you look down at your leg where this thing has bit you, I would like Wilson and um, John's to um, give me a observation roll, please. Okay. This is Sorry a that very big wound coming off of Kayla Rye. I don't know why it double rolled, ignore the second one. All right. Two successes and a panic. Two successes in a panic, and Wilson has a ton of stress. I forgot about how much stress you accumulated in the last session. Uh, go ahead and give me a panic roll, please, Wilson, as you see something horrifying, potentially. 
Uh, where's do I click for panic roll? Yeah, on the top left where there's it says stress, you can just move your um, move your mouse over to the actual character sheet. Um, oh, yeah, and it should say stress. That. Yep, that runs the panic. You keep it together, keep it together. surprisingly. I'm very Oof. cool about that. Yeah, so you like look, but you, you sort of grit your teeth and your fingernails sort of go into your palms, but you keep it together. Um, Kayla Rye, I would say that both of these successes from Johns and from Wilson are successes. Do you folks want to bank any of your successes? All you needed was one. Do you want to um, do you want to stunt any of these successes? Uh, what, are uh, what are my what are my options on this one again? Let me give you the um, observation stunts. Here we go. Is it coming for me? Are there more of them close by? Or how do I get in past away? Now this is specifically in looking at Kayla Rye uh, and the creature. So do you want to stunt any of those? Um, I'll go ahead and pocket mine. Okay. Um, I'll stunt it and say, is it coming for me? <laughs> okay. Let's check something here. Uh, okay. So, um, I'm going to message each of you what it is that you see in Discord. Okay. Uh, don't mind me, folks. It's just a private message. It means absolutely nothing. Shameless plug, shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is to you, and then to Red. I think I've. When was I? When did I message you last, Red? It has been a, a long time ago, but. No, uh, it was the last session. Oh, there we go. I got you. Boom. By okay. the way, it keeps it really nice and cold. Super. All right. That is your turn, Johns. Rye, we're up to you. All right. Um, It's no longer attached to me, right? No, it bit you hard right on your thigh, and it came away. It sort of, like, looks at you with this sort of strange sort of jauntiness to its uh, enormous oval head, and then sort of... It almost sort of like moves back away from you. Okay. Uh, since it's that close, I'm going to hit it with my cutting torch. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. Ooh, that's weird looking. One, two. Uh, all righty, all righty, all righty. That is. I'll, oof, dude, one success, but a couple panics here. So go ahead and roll your panic roll as you attempt to just swing your cutting torch at this creature. Where's the panic? On the left-hand side of your character sheet, you should see something that says stress. Now, of course, your stress levels are, are right below it, but if you mouse over, there we go. you should see the... There we go. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, oh. Rai screams <clears throat> this awful scream as she attempts to just wave her uh, cutting torch uh, at this creature. By the way, Rai, you're also going to need to make a power roll as you uh, may lose some power in your cutting torch. So if you look on the bottom left-hand corner of your character sheet, you'll see that. One success. Super. So you do not lose any power to your cutting torch. So unfortunately, you miss entirely with your cutting torch, um, and your stress level is decreased by one, but everyone who hears you must make an immediate panic roll, and that is everybody in the sound of your voice. John Wilson drops an item hearing your scream, but Albert Johns, knowing probably very little about you, um, keeps it together. Um, what do you drop? John, I think that you would probably drop- I only have one thing. <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, uh, go ahead. you drop the one item in your inventory, which is the maintenance. Jack. Which is your maintenance jack? You're like, ah! and it hits the floor. Uh, unless you want me to drop the armor suit. No, you can't drop that. It's possible. on you. So yeah, your stress level does go up by one, though. Okay. 
Yeah. All right, we're moving on. The creature, it's its turn now again. What's gonna happen? I'm gonna roll a d6. A five, oh boy. Okay, that is, uh, <laughs> that's another leg bite. Okay, I think that it would uh, squeal and run away from you, Rye, and it would, who's the closest to it? Yeah, he's gonna go for Wilson. And let's have him just. And no one's in the same zone as me, right? Nope, no one's in the same zone as you. Okay. So it runs, it just sort of squidges through uh, the um, uh, the material here on the cryobay, sort of without, uh, you've never seen anything this small move this fast. Um, it just jumps up onto one of the cryobays and then moves and tries to jump and bite your leg. Here we go. If only I could dodge. <laughs> um, well, it isn't your turn yet, so you no. could you could potentially block it if you had something metal in your hand, like oh I don't know, a maintenance a jack, maintenance jack <laughs> or a gun or something like that. You could use close combat to block this, but you got nothing. Here we go. I got nothing. All right, one success, two damage. You do have the armor, so make your armor roll. I'm gonna need it. Yes, you are. That's zero successes. So that's two damage. And you as well. Your leg fountains um, blood onto the walls. How, how much do how much health do I have? I don't know. How much health does what Wilson have? Check? What is the health? Two. Well, I mean, it's... Shit. Wilson had yep. two health. Yep. And so, I just got damage for two. So here's what happens. Number one, of course, you still get that... A uh, uh, pierced artery in your leg, and you just dive to the ground, holding onto your leg, try to keep it um, uh, pressure on it, and screaming. But your vision starts to cloud, and I want you to roll a d66 because you've hit the zero. Yes, I've hit the zero. D66. Here we go. A 33. Let's see what that is on my magic critical Back injury table. It is a bro is broken ribs. Your mobility and close combat take a minus two penalty. It's not fatal, but the leg injury certainly is. Uh, let's see how long the leg injury may last for D6 days. The leg injury will last for five days, and the broken ribs will last for two D6 days. That's four days. So here's what happens, I think. So, Wilson, as you grab for your leg, you, like, sprawl out and slip on your own blood, and you land hard on your maintenance jack, which just careens right into your ribs, and you hear a massive snap. You can, it's very hard for you to breathe, and you are, uh, you are broken. Um, and you are you are certainly going to die in a, in, in, a, uh, in a turn, in ten minutes, if you do not get some kind of medical aid. Um, it is now uh, Leah Davis's turn. Leah Davis, you're way up there at the top, girl. What do you want to do? So we are hearing all of this commotion, correct? Uh, yeah, through your comms. Uh, Captain, I think we need to get down there. <laughs> yeah, what the hell is going on? Don't know, but it doesn't sound good, and... It I think we need to book it, get out of here. Well, uh, I'll follow you. All right, let's go. Okay. So, how far can I move? So, um, you can move to the edge of a zone uh, as a fast action, and then you can use your slow action to do another move, right? So, each okay. each zone that you move to is, uh, you know, is an action. So, you can move essentially two zones sprinting. Unless you have some kind of a talent that allows you to move uh, faster than two zones in a turn. I uh, don't believe so. So, yeah, you can get to there, but I would say you can probably get even further. I would say you can get to the next junction point, which would be around the corridor to this door. Like so? Like around here. That way. Yeah. We're not going to be too... Uh, too strict about this. We're going to play this, play this fast and loose. I'll even open the door for you to see the next area. All right? Awesome. Cool. All right. So that's your turn. Yeah. John Wilson, you're in deep shit. What do you want to do? Would it be possible for me to medical aid myself? That's a good question. Let me take a look at the rules. I think the answer is yes, but 
Actually, no, you can't, because you're broken. And when you're broken, you can't do that stuff, unfortunately. Okay. So, yeah, you can just sort of mumble. You're semi-coherent. You're, you're bleeding out. You see this horrible-looking uh, black carapace creature that's just literally bit you directly in the thigh uh, into your femoral artery, and you are bleeding out. So there's very little no, that you can do. Can't do anything this turn, can I? Unfortunately, not until not until medical aid is given to you. But right. I think that when you're broken, you cannot do anything. I don't have okay. Sarah around to tell me rules. I'm 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 paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Sorry to, to well, then that's my turn. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to make your turn. It's such a short one. Uh, but we are uh, we are down to Vanessa Miller. Miss Miller, you just watched Leah Davis run out the door. What do you want to do? I'm going to book it after. Her, okay. So. Yeah. And then next junction, which is down here. Yep. Yeah, you guys, you guys can split and take the take the take the T fork. So uh, yeah, Davis took over here. And you took over here. I'll even open the door for you, just like I did for her. Cheers. Okay. Um, all right. And then finally ending the turn on our little friend who got the third got the third one at the very bottom of the of the round here. Uh, let's see what he does. Roll a D6. Us oh fuck my life. <laughs> oh no. Duh, sixes. It's always sixes in my life. Well, I mean, it could be worse. Okay, so Wilson, you're broken. <sighs> Man. You're on the ground. It's going to try to bite you in the throat. So it makes this horrible sort of bleat. And you see its fangs open up. And it sees that you're on the ground. Your eyes are sort of rolling back into your head. And it's going to make a throat bite action on you. Okay. Oh, God. See? I called it. Now you can play the other guy. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I mean, you may get you, we may get you back in time. We, we shall see. I don't know. This, is, this game is fucking brutal as hell. All right, here we go. Bloodburster throat bite. Yes, folks, it's called a bloodburster. That's one success, one damage. So, okay. if the attack causes damage, it automatically inflicts critical injury 61. Okay. So, so, do I roll my armor? You or? do roll your armor, even though you're broken, you still roll armor. Mitigate one damage, please. So, minus one. One success. <laughs> So tell me how this life-saving armor with your compression suit literally saves your fucking baking. Bacon, at least for now. Um, well, could I flavor it that I did have Wilson um, not use his um, air supply, but would that be able to because the visor is open? Sure. So maybe he's still got his helmet on. I love it. But the visor's just open. Yes. So it actually just bites into the neck ring of the armor. Oh, amazing. And you hear like a ting as this thing's fangs, chrome fangs, just uh, splay out and then chink, uh, collapse on the metallic ring around your helmet. And then you're like, ah, and this thing just screeches um, and then slithers uh, away from you. That is its turn. <laughs> Apparently, um, when broken, I can still crawl. Yeah, you can crawl, but it would probably try to crawl right after you on its turn. Right? Yeah. I don't think you could get away from it, unfortunately. No. Yeah. No. But that's it. As Maeve says, you can crawl. That's it. That's it. That's it. Wilson, I have bad news. Yep. Guess it's who's got another go. Guess who's next in the <laughs> turn order, man? Yep. It went right from a 10 a to a 1. Two one. So... It's it's going to go again. I don't know what it's going to do. Let's let the dice decide, yeah? Yeah. Always let the dice decide. It rolled a one. Here's the interesting thing. Wilson, you see the your life flash before your eyes. Your, le your leg is bleeding out. This creature leapt for your neck. Instead, it got a mouthful of steel and then jumped off of you. And quicker than lightning, you watch through blurred vision, coated... Uh, your whole face 
uh, with sweat and, and probably some arterial spray. You watch as this thing screeches and then darts to a nearby vent and it's small enough to squeeze between the slats in the vent and disappears. Ooh. So yeah, that's exactly what happens. It just slips into the vent and bye bye muchacho. So all of its turns are gone, but you're dying. So we're gonna keep on keeping on until we see what the hell happens to you. <laughs> um, Rai isn't in a good place either, but for some reason or other, Rai is uh, Rai is still on her feet, grabbing onto her leg. She's a roughneck. She is. Uh, Maeve Climber <laughs> has redeemed another random piece of gear. Thank you again, Maeve. Who does this go to? Please let us know. Because it is John's turn at this point in time. Uh, roll a d4. Sure, why not? I'll roll a d4. That's a two, Maeve. Tell me who it goes to, please. Including John? Yeah, because John's uh, got a John got John's got the stun baton in the last mm -hmm. in the last go. So it's either Miller, Rye, Davis, or Wilson. So you rolled a two. I rolled a two. So I'm thinking if you're gonna go top down, Miller, Rye, Davis, Wilson, probably Rye. That's what I'm thinking. Yep, Rye then. All let right. It, let it be duct tape. Let it be duct tape. Go ahead and give me a D10 roller, please, Ben. All right. A six. All right. That is not duct tape. It is... <laughs> Holy shit, this is the best. Is it a maintenance jack? No, it's not a maintenance jack. <laughs> it is, he finds the one I dropped. It, it is, in fact, what you have probably wanted, and it couldn't be more serendipitous because you scrabbling around uh, in the cryo bay holding onto your leg, you spy um, directly to the east of you in Cryo 2, a personal med kit. Nice. I'm hobbling for it. Hobble, hobble, hobble. All right. And I'm going to patch myself up. Yeah. So you can, in fact, do that. Medical kits, I believe, give you bonuses to your medical aid roll. Let me just double check about that. So, med kit. Here we go. Personal med kit. Med kits actually will give you a plus two to your medical aid roll on yourself. So let's just check medical aid if you want to be able to stop certain things from killing you here. Yep, the medical aid roll. Uh... Yeah, medical Got aid. One in a panic. Medical aid is for recovery. Or if you are uh, having a condition that you need to be able to use your medical aid skills to um, to apply to a certain role. Um, let me just check something here. So yes, health points for recovery uh, will in fact be recovered for a number equal to the number of successes that you rolled. All right. So how many successes did you get? You got one success, one panic. All right. Well, panics can still occur when you're, you know, in a situation like you're in, Kayla Rye. So go ahead and roll your panic and don't get a 10 or higher. Oh, fuck. So, okay. Here's what I think happens. Uh, you, got an <laughs> you got an 11. Okay. So I think you hear like scrabbling through the vents in your area and as you open the med kit and attempt to apply it to your leg you hear it and you're like ah and this med kit flies apart all of the bandages and sutures and material just splay and scatter throughout the room and you have to seek cover the closest place to seek cover honestly is underneath one of those um uh, uh cryopods so your stress level is decreased by one, but the stress level of all friendly PCs in short range, and that's everything in that room, increases by one. So you're giving some PCs some serious stress, including Lori Clayton. 
Yes, we do have a we do have a few non-combatants, uh, according to John Wilson. The medic is still alive. We do have Flynn, who's the medic over here, and we still have Laurie Clayton, who's still alive as well. And we, of course, have Albert Johns, part of the Cronus crew. These three folks are still alive, so they could potentially help you. But that's neither here nor there. Unfortunately, uh, Rai, your medical aid role did not function. Um, and you did you did add the plus two to your medical aid roll, correct? I did. Cool. All right. It is what it is. Uh, it's now Kayla Rye's turn. Oh, wait, that was you. That was me. Oh, well, then that was your turn, it seems like. Because that yeah. was your slow action. Yeah. Okay. Did we skip Johns? I don't think so, did we? We did skip Johns. We did, yes. My bad. Yeah. Johns, go back to you. What do you do? Right. Uh, who is the closest injured to me? Uh, across the way in the other cryo bay, you do see Rai um, grasping her leg and hobbling over. She has screamed and she is hiding under a cryo tube. Okay, well, since. And you she don't see is... Wilson, I don't think. No, you do not see Wilson from that angle. Okay, so since uh, Rai is closest, I am going to move over to her and attempt medical aid. Okay, so you can, yeah, you can definitely move up to one zone, and then I don't think the corridor um, is, to be uh, honest, is... Is that is, correct? Yeah, you can move to there. That's close enough, I think, that that would be your uh, your movement. Uh, and then your slow action is medical aid. Give it a shot. Okay. Two successes! No panics! Johns, explain to me how this works. Uh, well, in this case, I am dashing over there, having fresh adrenaline to get the grogginess off of me from waking up in those cryo tubes. It's amazing what will happen with a little bit of bloodshed. <laughs> and so with that adrenaline pumping, I'm dashing over there like a gazelle, and I am grabbing the med pack that went flying everywhere and I am going to start working on uh, stimming this bleeding and getting Rai back up onto her feet. Okay. Superb. Um, I am going to message, Ben, I'm going to message you something just to make sure. Okay. Okay. Hopefully you got that and gave it a read. All right. Uh, so yeah, we have uh, removed the critical injury now from the medical aid use. Thank you so very, very much, Albert Johns. You've made a new friend. Kayla Rye, I think that makes sense. That's probably the reason why you didn't yep. get to, to use your 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 uh, med kit is because Albert sort of came in after the fact and he was able to to stabilize you. Um, shall I, I think at this point in time, we still have John and Jay Wilson who is bleeding rather profusely and uh, may die in a shift and if, if something is not, ha uh, you know, is not done to save him. Um, there is no threat at this point, so I'm actually going to I'm, not gonna, I'm actually going to bring our, our friendly NPCs on. We've got Flynn, who sort of rushes to your aid. And I don't think Laurie Clayton would do very much other than sort of walk over to you and sort of like look down at your leg, Rye, um, which is covered by, you know, the, the bandages from the, from the med kit. And sort of look down and go, you all right? I'm fine. You don't look fine. Meanwhile... Um, I think that Liam Flynn would run over to you, sort of turn you over, um, uh, begin CPR, and attempt to do medical aid as well. All right, so let's see. What is his medical aid roll? He's got a plus... Ooh, he's got a plus two medical aid. All right, let me just roll. I don't have his character sheet up and running, but let me just see if I can grab his stats... And we'll just do a quick roll from him. Uh, here we go. Flynn. Okay. I do actually have his stats. All right. So medical aid. Here we go. Incoming. 
You Ooh. could say he's in like Flynn. Damn, he's got some serious medical aid chops. He's got five empathy, three medical aid, so that's eight dice. Boom. There we go. <laughs> Fuck my life. Nope. That's zero successes. He's gonna push it, and he's gonna get some stress. Oops. Can't push it on an NPC track. That's why I got those waggy jiggy weirdnesses. Um, I'm just gonna give him stress and have him do it again. There we go. Boop. One stress and continue. There we go. Two successes. Hooray. So he saved your life, Mr. Wilson. For now, at least. So I think that you are, uh, you're back with, um, I think you're back from being broken. Um, he does give you those two points of health back. So you're back up technically to full, but you definitely have a massive, you know, a bandaged wound on your leg. So I think mm -hmm. that's where we're going to stop our combat. I think by this time, Davis and Wilson, if you guys want to move your way, it takes you probably about, I don't know, two or three minutes to run down from, um, from, from uh, the bridge to Cryo 2. So I'll go ahead and move that to you. I'll mo move you to that area if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, please. Please. Yeah. Let me... Whoops. Hey, now. Okay. Matt, I messaged you back. Cool. Thank you very much. All right. So I'm going to grab you both. And I'm going to move you both. Okay, a lot of maps here, folks. Sorry for the wait. Okay, now we're cooking. So yeah, you two come running down. Uh, you, for the first time, I think you see what it is that Wilson and um, Rye saw when they first got to Cryo, which is the remains of this horribly mutated creature potentially a person they're wearing the remnants of a suit um which is missing its head you also see scratch marks and claw marks on the cryo uh, bay doors um and then the just seeping pools of blood that are coming from cryo one and of course wilson in cryo three um that's that's pretty much it and yeah, John J. Wilson, you are not broken. You are not bleeding out. You've received medical attention, as has Kayla Rye in time. All right, let me give you guys a little bit more uh, music. Uh, or at least uh, ambiance. Hey, you're right. I hope you don't, you're not thinking you're getting sick pay for this. Tick pay, what's that? Please. Hey, you guys can move. We need the sick pay. Like. Just get me back on my feet. Let's get this done so we can get paid. Okay. Miller and Davis. Give me an observation roll. In this kind of a situation, I I don't know if, if stress is going to matter, but we'll see. Two successes, no panics from Leah Davis. And then Miller, one success, no panics. Okay. I'm going to message each of you something. <clears throat> Uh, can I do that? Yeah, I can right-click. Uh, and there's that. There you go. I have messaged you what you have observed. Oh, 
Yep, yeah, acknowledged. Okay. Got it. Um, Sean's... I don't actually think that it's necessary for you to make an observation considering you did a medical aid roll on Rye. So I'm just going to message you directly. Sounds good. Oh, I did already. My fault. I messaged you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I messaged you already. So I've messaged everybody, the four of you. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Cool. Good. All right, so what do you guys want to do? What just happened? What the fuck just happened? Really say that. <laughs> right? Oh. What the hell? Where's Chen? Is he still in the other anything? room? Oh, Cham, Cham. I haven't heard from Cham. I haven't heard from him. Let's. Cham. Acknowledge. Acknowledge, Cham. There is no response. Cham going. Maybe we should go that way figure out where maybe there's like a calm link issue yeah, maybe maybe um yeah did you did you know sorry who did I'm you sorry. who did you say that uh, to Leah oh yeah Leah Leah Davis did you know? And I and I point. What do you point to? Um, some fluid on the floor. Do now. Say again. I do now. Right. Don't really care. But yeah. Yeah. Doesn't really bother me either way, really. But uh, what bothers me is where's Cham? Why can't we get Cham on the comms? Especially after seeing this BS right here. Like, first of all, when you get in a firefight, you're supposed to invite us first. You guys can't be the only ones to have all the fun. Lori Clayton turns to John's from across the way and says, Ah, Officer Johns. I'm glad you're still among us. She sort of walks over to your cryo bay, looks at the pillow that you have overturned with your gun underneath it, and says to you, Officer, considering that there's some, um, what seems to be dangerous things on board, don't you think that you could potentially hand those out to the rest of us? Oh, I would love to go ahead and hand some out to everybody. However, this is all that I have, and I need to make sure that I am able to continue my position on the ship. I see. Yes, of course. So just fend for yourself, and uh, the rest of us just... Uh... <laughs> Great. Fantastic. This is what I get from being asleep for how long were we asleep? Uh, uh, that, yeah, only only seventy only years, it's fine. Short, short nap, short seventy years. Seventy years, wonderful. Is um, is the company still around? Yeah. Oh well, good to see that. The important things hey. don't change. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're gonna get a bit pet. Get a back pay anyway. <laughs> yeah, I would hope so. So I guess we have you to thank for our rescue. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Indeed. Um uh I'm I'm assuming that means an extra share. 
Uh, I don't know how company share politics works nowadays, but uh, my estimation is that with what we have on board, it's quite important that we uh, return to civilization as soon as possible. Okay. Um, whilst we try and locate our engineer, um, do any of your people uh, know how to uh, uh, link up the ship so we can actually tow you back to port? I am... <laughs> I'm not a scientist or an engineer. I'm simply a matter of, uh, of the liaison to Whalen Yutani. I'm I'm sure that um, if it comes to uh, engineering matters, well, um, um, I, I'm perhaps Officer Johns has uh, information regarding uh, any of those matters, or um, well, considering we're the only ones left, and uh, she sort of looks over at the Colonial Marine who's dead inside the tube. He would have been a help, I guess. Okay, fine. So let's uh, let's engineering so we can find find, find out what he shipped me. Well, well he, he... before we um, go any further, I think that <laughs> it's it's kind of important that um, that we do something that uh, I think Officer Johns would agree is probably a, a very extremely important thing to do. Don't you agree, Officer? And she sort of like eyebrowses at you, Johns, and you know she's talking about the inoculation. Yes, yes, we we need to get everybody inoculated so we do not lose anybody else. Oh, and this inoculation thing. The guy who's it just exploded, he was inoculated. I don't you, remember him being inoc. Do you remember him being inoculated, officer? Uh, I, I I am still a bit fuzzy, but I know that we did do that. But we also still saw some people with symptoms. <laughs> uh, right, so, th that could have been psychosomatic. But uh, give me one moment, and she sort of peers over at the body. Uh of uh, Cooper, of Dr. Cooper. And she sort of like, very sort of methodically examines and sort of looks in the pockets and she says, oh my goodness. And she pulls out from Dr. Cooper's uh, lab coat spattered with blood. She pulls out a small vial of a sort of grayish black fluid. She says, well, there's your answer. Didn't get inoculated. Mm. Doctor, heal thyself. Isn't that the phrase? Indeed. So that what? couldn't be a vial he was going to use on somebody else or a spare one that he just shoved in his pocket? I don't understand why he wouldn't just take the inoculation himself. Unless he'd already taken it and that's one that was extra or meant for somebody else. Or maybe he just that's doesn't trust a company. <laughs> Well, suffice it to say, it really is quite important that we get everybody here inoculated. If, if there's only one on vial... We have others. No, we have others. Uh, if they're still available. If, Johns, don't you think that we should probably get them all to med bay and get them inoculated? Yes, on the double. Excellent. Thank you so much. Now, so officer... Yes, absolutely. Captain, do you think we should get going? Get your yeah. crew taken care of? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, uh, we would do this. I mean, let, let the uh, the men get uh, inoculated first. I mean, the crew. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take up the rear. Clayton, lead the way. Yes, of course. And she um, takes up the lead to the door in the back of Cryo 3, here, and she opens it. Right through here, of course. I'm gonna check Wilson's pockets, and then I'm gonna pick him up and carry him in there. Okay. Wilson um, is not dead, of course, right? 
so I don't know if he, he wants you to check his pockets, but hey, he can still sort of mumble and talk. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll do the same with Roy. Uh, let's, uh, Roy, um, it, lean on me. Oh, I'm, I'm the one picking up Wilson. Oh, right, sorry. Can't Wilson walk now? Yeah, he can walk. It's 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 painful, but he can walk. Is there anything uh, around that they can use as a crutch? Oh dear, I uh, I would say so. Yeah, there's probably a whole bunch of things in cryo. He could probably use his uh, maintenance jack as a crutch. Yeah, I'll use the maintenance jack. I thought when you drop it, it disappears. You know, it depends where you are. Okay. I'm giving you guys a I'm giving you guys an out. Okay? <laughs> you I mean, drop it, it disappears through the floor. <laughs> they're right near the examination room. I think there would probably be a crutch in there. Yeah, there may be in fact a crutch, but just getting you in there in, in and of itself. You may have to go into the exam room, grab a crutch and come out. I'm fine with that. Yeah. yeah. Can you throw a maintenance jack on my sheet? Uh sure, why not? I'll do that um, in just a just a smidge. Don't worry. I don't think you're going to need to use any heavy machinery anytime soon. Okay. Well, I am Wilson not is able going to move to hobble myself. Into I'm stuck the... with the door. Yeah. Wilson is going to hobble into the room. Okay. With, with the um, classic old arm around the um, arm around the chest, because that's where he's. Even though he can't put an arm around in the back of his where he got hurt. It's just around the chest, so it's like, yep. Right on. Okay. I'm okay. Now, there are two uh, personal med kits in this room. Flynn takes one and <laughs> um, sort of offers it to any of the rest of you and says, I'm uh, sorry that I didn't actually uh, run over here and see that so many people were hurt. I, I probably should have just uh, uh, should have come in here. That would have been much more helpful at the time, don't you think? <laughs> sort of presses his uh, glasses up onto his forehead. Um, more than happy to distribute to you folks if you're in need of any pain uh, relief. I could use some. Yes, you yes. did a good job, kid, but it's just old. Just old. I I understand. No problem, sir. Here and uh, Wilson, you now have a personal med kit, so you can yeah. you can grab that from. The you actually you can yeah you can do that as well, uh, Ra. You could just grab, you type in maintenance jack or just jack, and you'll find maintenance jack and just drag it onto your character sheet into your inventory, and it should pop up. Mm -hmm. That's the great thing about having a compendium. Roll twenty. Oh, what would it be under? It would be under med kit personal. Yeah. But would it be under gear or? Uh, yeah, if, yeah. If, if you just type medkit in the search bar, it should pop okay. up. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, personal medkit. That's the one? That's the one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Check something here. All righty. So... You guys are noting, of course, that the air is on. You see the the the, the fans are in the uh, in the rooms that you're in are are whirring. That they're the air scrubbers are clearly on. They're they're um, you know obviously um, able to uh, to filter the air appropriately. The lights are also on. You can hear the the whirring uh, of the power thrumming through the uh, through the um, through the ship, but. I think one thing that you folks did notice when you were on in the bridge when the power came on is that the engines are still not on. <clears throat> okay? Just an FYI about that. Now, those of you who don't have your helmets on, who are breathing this air, the air smells really stale. And uh, personally, you probably would think it would be very heavy in carbon dioxide. Now, Johns, you know that... Clearly, the air scrubbers haven't been used in, well, decades. Because you've been in sleep for 70 years. So you would know that if you're going to fix the air filters, that the air scrubbers need to have 
the filter is completely replaced in the central air scrubber shaft. Sounds pleasant. Yep. Yes, yeah, so everybody, we need to uh, to fix the air and make it better for us to breathe. We need to go ahead and swap out the air filters in the main scrubber shack so that the air is not as stale and air is getting filtered appropriately. That's what I hope Sham was doing, but we can't get hold of him. Maybe several of us should go down there and see if we can figure out where he's at and what he's doing. Are you okay to walk? Yeah, I'll be alright. Okay. Anyone else want to volunteer? I'm not sure how, how much I'll, help I'll help go me. with him. So it looks like it's just us two then. All right, so they're going to go check on CHAM, air filters, engineering areas, right? Yeah. And where are we going? Captain, my captain. Oh, well, I say I'm going to go check on the, the air filters, check on CHAM. Um, you can either come with or hang around here okay. with uh, the, these guys and uh, uh, see if they've got that, that medical injection stuff. Yes, yes, okay. of course. So... That's kind of why we're here in the first place, Lori Walton says. Um, as well as, and she points directly at <clears throat> Rai's leg. No one was going to say anything? Did we uh, need to? Yes, there is... <clears throat> I'll give you a second here. There is a bunch of white liquid coming out of his leg here. Yeah. That we need to take a look at. Yeah, I don't know. Her what... leg. Her leg. Yes. I guess Rise is, uh, is a bearded female. lady. Bearded lady. Yeah. No, I think. Uh, what, um. There's a very strange look on uh, on um, uh, on the the company agent's face as she looks at your leg. And she says, I don't know what that is about, but perhaps what, you've any of you do. you a skin job before? A what? A skin job. She a looks synthetic. At, she looks at an you. An artificial person. An android? You're an android. Yeah, the company likes to keep tabs on you. Huh. I'm assuming if it's some new company protocol, they install one with the crew. Pretty common. Hey, Matt. Yes. Uh, since um, Wilson is the company agent, would he know that back, what, 70 years ago, androids weren't as prevalent as they are now, Dave? Yeah, I would say that they were certainly not as prevalent and they were certainly not as advanced. And they didn't look very... Um... Human-like. Well, they did. I mean, let's think about this, um, you know, canonically. Androids have been around since, you know, if we talk about Covenant and all that jazz, uh, Prometheus, like, uh, you know, Wayland made the first real sort of human looking androids. They didn't act very human, they acted very stilted, and their mannerisms were not at all like those of your average everyday person. Speaking of average everyday persons, hey raiders, Thanks for joining us. Looks like we've got a little bit of a raid going on. Really appreciate you guys being in here. Hope you guys have some fun on our channel. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, Lori Clayton is kind of a little bit shocked that you are so human-like and so human acting, I guess. And Wilson will just say, they are still, they are still where you property but they're a little bit more, uh, how'd you say? Uh, I, I, I honestly can't think of the word um, there. Advanced? Uh, no, um... Uh, oh, what's the word? Auto something. Um, 
autoironic? I don't know. Is that is that the word? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> she can be. Listen, I, um, it's just one setting, you know. Like you just got to do that, and then yeah. autoerotica. Okay, sorry. No, basically the saying that she has her own opinions and thoughts about things. Mm -hmm. So more autonomous. Autonomous, like, yes, <laughs> autonomous. That's correct. Yeah. 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 So he'll probably say they're just a little bit more autonomous than they used to be. So, did any of you know that she was an android? I don't know if anybody would. I'm not sure. Clayton, You're assuming would that we would care. I mean, it's kind of a natural way of things now, so... It, I see. I, look, everybody just does their thing as long as they're doing their job well and it's not affecting us negatively I really don't give a damn do you got something against androids me personally no as long as they follow orders I follow away use orders she smiles well then we won't have a problem now um, seeing as that you're a synthetic person I believe you won't need this. And she turns around and she's got four vials of this black fluid. She gives two to John's and she keeps two for herself. We've already been inoculated, so I think it's unnecessary for us to get a double dose. But, um, Captain, uh, Miss. Well, you, you need to give one to Cham. Yeah, to how about it? I gotta have one for Cham if I'm going down to find him. That's totally fair. She gives one to you. Captain? She turns to Mr. You. Wilson? Is he... Uh, obviously you'd want to keep your company uh, rapper... Safe. Your, your fellow rapper... Um, inoculation? Are they... Uh, safe? What do you mean? I mean, you saw what happened to that other guy that had the thing come out of him. <sighs> I'm wondering he said about. He wasn't. Things. I see. Inoculated, or I think perhaps he? we've gone a little too far too fast. Um, Officer Johns, perhaps it would be useful for you to recount to our saviors what occurred with our little crew that caused the problem in the first place. I think that would be best. So, we were sent on a scientific mission to set down on planet LV-1113. And we explored some ancient ruins. <clears throat> and while we were down on our mission with the scientific team, some discoveries were made and some weird things were starting to happen. People started to get sick and things were starting to happen. And we had found some egg sacs. Clayton, I think it would be best at this point if you followed up with what we were doing down there. Of course. Thank you so much, officer. I, as the company liaison, of course, told our scientific team to obtain all samples of this new xenogenic material to return to Earth for analysis, since that was what we were sent to do in the first place. But the problem was that being exposed to the material in the air on that planet, the mutagenic spores that came from those egg sacs caused massive and rather grotesque transformations 
in the majority of the crew. Scientific minds like Dr. Cooper, of course, were brought on board in order to find a cure before we all suffered the same fate. Dr. Co Dr. Cooper did, in, find, in fact, find a cure. And it was this. And she holds up this vial of black material. And we call it um, the Draconis 26 strain. Uh, since the D Draconis 26 system is where we were in the first place. And I think that you guys all know where Draconis 26 is. Considering where you are right now, which is in an uncharted star system, Dracodus 26 is on the other side of the galaxy. Hundreds of light years from here. Well, that doesn't make much sense at all. Well, it does in a way if they've been traveling at sublight speeds for 72 years. So here's a question for you. So, you're saying that we should trust a vial of antidote that's over 70 years old. How do we know it's not left, not, like, lost its efficacy? Like, even gonna work? Really old. Well, if Dr. Cooper were still alive, I think that he would vouch for it, considering he still kept it in his pocket. I think that he would have certainly stated that it was viable. But yeah, it but was it, kept in his his pockets yeah, and in the cryo tube. And he didn't trust us if he kept it in his pocket. No, I believe that that's incorrect and quite a large assumption on your part, Captain. Why would you say that? Well, if he's got it in his pocket, what, why why else would he have it in his pocket? Most likely to keep it so that when he was out of danger, he could give it to the people who needed it to be inoculated against this vile threat aboard the ship. I thought you said everyone had been inoculated on this ship. We have been inoculated, except clearly for Dr. Cooper. Because if you're not inoculated, and she points at the sort of red spatter on John's, that is what happens. So once again, and she sort of takes the uh, the material and she plants it into a syringe, and she hands it to you, Captain Miller, and says, it would be advisable to be inoculated against the threat. Okay, and um, as it were, who comes first? Uh, so, We've got, and you said we only have uh, four inoculations? That's correct. One I've given to you for your engineer, I believe. Mm -hmm. And what about, uh, what Dave is here? And Ray, and Kate, boy. Okay, so you drink it. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it's in a syringe, so you could drink it or you can inject it. It's fine, either way. Okay, so you drink it. You, you pop the cap and drink it. All right. It tastes like absolute horrible, slimy, salty, grotesque sludge going down your gullet. But Miller, just, Miller's fine. Whatever. I grab one, say, yeah, hell with it, and then just inject it into my leg. Okay. Done. Wilson? Uh, Need a I'm hand, sure. friend. I'm not sure if it will have any ill effects on previously injured patients. Has it been tested thoroughly? We've taken it. She looks at John's. So that's... I can help you if you two. want. We're still here. We are. And we've been here for 72 years. In, in cryo tubes. So? So? So was the doctor. The doctor clearly didn't take his and needed he inoculation. Until he got out. That's correct. That's what I'm saying. 
I just don't think it's had enough <sighs> testing. So That's all I'm saying. Man, we all gotta die sometime. And then I look over at her and I say, and if this turns me into something nasty, you're gonna die with me. So we're clear. I think that you'll live a long and fruitful life with this. And you'll thank me in the end. If you want to live, you'll live much longer with the vaccine than without it. Wow, this is bringing me back a few years. I don't know why. It's just very strange. <clears throat> I don't know why. It's very, very I mean, I, that, That's the kind of point I'm trying to make. It's the one person <laughs> that doesn't want to take the vaccination. Did, didn't mean this to go, go there, but it looks like we did. Uh, oh, well. We're now sponsored by Pfizer. It, <laughs> it, it came out only, what, five days after you got infected? What is this? Listen. It needs more testing. Listen. All we need to do is, like, there's, look, it's bleach, okay? It's just bleach. You take it, you put it into your leg, and you're fine, okay? It kills the, it kills it, everything, it's fine. I'm sorry, but I just don't trust it just yet. Is I'm not sure. Else we got around here. I just start rummaging around while they're chatting because I've kind of completely lost interest in the entire conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, I think that Clayton would say, "Well, then I guess considering you've been exposed to the air, we're gonna have to keep you in quarantine, my friend." I would hate to uh, have you wreak havoc on the crew. If that is a possible thing, I don't think I'm... I'll be able to help in any other way as I am. I'm sorry to say this, Mr. Wilson, because I myself have allegiances to the company, but I also have allegiance to um, my own well-being. So it remains me as um, not acting, of course, Captain. Uh, that, of course, is... Uh, and she points to Johns. Um, that, of course, uh, belongs to Officer Johns, Second Officer Johns there. But as Senior Liaison to the company... I believe it falls to me to ask Officer Johns to remand you into custody. Yes, I, I do believe that is correct. <laughs> and if you are not going to take this vaccine, we are going to have to place you in quarantine. Or if you are too scared to give it to yourself, we can have one of your crewmates do it for you now. Oh, I'm happily able to do that for you. Great. <laughs> and if you're worried about it hurting, just slide your little britches down a little bit. We'll give it to you right in the tuchus. It won't hurt a bit. I mean, come on. Look, I'm not... whatever. Okay. It's like, you know, it's, you have seconds to it's decide. Like the, it's like the people who said the smallpox vaccine was, like, a complete joke, and then they died. So, like, how about we just move on? Take this, shut up, take a shot of something, who cares? I'm sure we got some stems around here or something, if, if you need a little boost of energy. Do we have stems around here? What do we got going on? What else is around here? Hey, you look all over the place, you do see, you probably do see some stems. While I'm rummaging, I'm Look, kind of slyly sticking a few of those in my pocket. Okay. So let's 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 cap off this thing. Wilson, are you intending to um, have the inoculation, or are you intending to be remanded into quarantine? I'm probably being um, remanded into quarantine because Wilson is pretty much putting his foot down, saying, "I don't trust this. It's been not been tested enough." for me to trust its inoculation. And I'm not going to be a test subject for it. It's your life. Apologies for this, mm -hmm. officer. And um, she sort of just motions to you. Now, we're going to freeze at this point in time because technically speaking, 
We've actually ended Act 1 after this little escapade with the horrible monster. And I think it's time that we take a break anyway so that I can give you your Act 2 agendas. We're going to start Act 2 directly after the break. Um, so, how about we go to break? I'll give you your agendas for Act 2, and then we'll see what occurs with our friend Wilson, uh, who has uh, been thrown in the pokey. And we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. Wilson! Wilson! Uh, he, no, <laughs> he will probably take the, the vial, but he won't take the injection just yet. So he'll probably be in quarantine with the vials in case he does want to take it. Got it. Depending on what his, um, depending on what his, uh, what, what is it called? The, the agenda? What are we going to get? <laughs> the, uh, the yeah. Brains over, over the, yeah. That works for me. Yeah, so he'll, he'll, yeah. Once he gets his motivation, he'll, he'll see. He'll inject. He wants to do. He'll choose to inject if he wants. All right, makes sense. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, folks, don't go anywhere. We're that's part of his agenda. That's what was the word. We will, we will see what your agenda holds. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back just after this break. Stay with us. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, and we're back. Okay, so I've given all their players their Act 2 agendas. Um, they should all be aware of what they need to get done. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll start off uh, with... Um, I guess John's and Wilson, well, John's leading Wilson to quarantine. Um, there is- John's leading John. To, to the John. The, the, the quarantine, <laughs> yeah, the quarantine area, I believe is actually on another deck. It's not on, it's not on a deck, which is cryo deck. I think quarantine is actually probably in the science lab area. There's a science lab quarantine, which is probably on B deck. So I'll go ahead and sort of move the two of you to that deck. You go through various areas on the ship, uh, you know, to take the elevator down to deck B, and I'll just move Wilson and Johns to deck B. You guys can have a little scene if you want. Let me know how that goes. I guess when I chat. The funny thing is, it looks like um, Johns and Wilson are the bearded guys. <laughs> they do. Yeah, this is... This <laughs> they is, both are beards. It's super beard quarantine. <laughs> Didn't you know? That's the way it works. So, yeah. This is where they are. I'll just shift ping y'all. Um, they're in med lab on B deck. So I think that with that said, Johns, you probably would go out of med lab and lock the door. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this door for you here. Boop. You read my mind. Oh, yeah. Locked. You're locked in med lab there, Wilson. Mm -hmm. Sucks to be you. And Wilson is just going to probably take a seat where, on a bed or whatever he can sit on and just give himself time to ponder what's happened the situation he's got himself in and just reevaluate what's happened. Okay. What does that mean, reevaluate yeah. what's happened? Well, he wasn't expecting that this ship would have hostile contacts in it, and he was definitely not prepared for it. Hmm. But uh, ever after that, he was like, but that's not the reason why we came here in the first place. The reason why we came here is to salvage this ship. Is he talking to himself? No, th this is all going on in his head, pretty much. Sure. Be careful of what you expose to our friendly players, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Yeah. And while he was walking down with um, John's, <clears throat> This was going on in his head, and he was just thinking, why did I forget that I w that was my goal? That I wanted to establish the ship. I said it to everybody. Why did I forget about that? Hmm. And to salvage the ship, I may need this inoculation to... And, yeah, it doesn't take him long in the med bay to... Um, come to his final conclusion and end up inoculating himself and 
then after doing that, he's going to open like the little probably like s slide door in the door and just throw out the vial, showing John that he's taken the inoculation. John's the um, the the slat in the med bay sort of quarantine in a um, in a uh, sort of like Silence of the Lambs esque drawer, which is like pushed in and out. You see Wilson's yep. uh, drawer get shoved out, and you see that there is an empty syringe. It puts the syringe in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Or it gets the injection again. <laughs> <laughs> um, is John's able to see any blood or anything on the end of the needle indicating that he actually gave it to himself and not just ported it out. Yeah, I think that you can see that there is a, a slight uh, a drop of blood on the tip of the syringe. Right. Well, with that, I would go ahead and open the door for him then. Okay. And then we would head back to regroup. Fantastic. So, the, the doors were locked before, but now, with John's prowess, he has unlocked them and opened them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. As you folks are making your way back from B uh, deck, if necessary, to A deck, I'd like to find out what the other four of you are doing or saying, or you know what what you're intending to do at this point in time. Um. Well, I'm I'm hoping to get a search party together to uh, to hunt for um for Champ. For Cham, of course, yeah. Cham has uh, been missing. Yeah, this is pretty worrying. I, I suppose it does cut down on crew costs. That's a yeah, but yeah. It is worrying that I'm missing a, a member of my crew. Hmm. Right, Cham is Cham is your buddy. Who, who did you say that to? Sorry. Rye. To Rye. Rye. Kayla Rye. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Coming to help me look for him? Leah, are you coming? Yeah, let's get this, this show on the road. Let's get moving. Let's find Cham. Get this stuff moving. Once we get things up and running, I'll get back to the cockpit and get us going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can get up, if we can get the engines going, uh, do do like a a, a big flight. Yeah, all system check. <clears throat> yep. Cool, cool, cool. Now, you you folks are in the examination room, and there is actually a a comms unit over here in the examination room. Now, the comms unit, of course, you guys all have on your suits, which enables you to talk to one another, but. Since you have been tethered to the Montero, you're also able to have the mother 2000 unit of the Montero speak to you either through your own comms unit or through the speaker comms unit in the room in which you're in. So there is a squeal of static on those uh, individuals who still have their helmets on. Um, and you hear the voice, a very uh, discernible voice, of Mother on the Montero. And the Mother's voice is um, sort of laced with static and some artifacts, this sort of strange sort of audio artifacts. Um, and you hear Mother say, Displace, displacement, displacement drive, malfunction, mal, 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 malfunction, ca ca cascade failure, fail, cascade failure imminent, 
fission reactor overload in T minus 10 minutes. Danger. And then you hear coming over your comm sets from the Montero this sound. And this is live, folks. So you have 10 minutes. Uh, okay. Um, right. Let's book it to that. Uh, I don't want to be tethered to the um, Montero. When you are. Uh, you are indeed still tethered to the Montero. Yes, I don't, I don't want to be. Especially if that fusion reactor is going to go up. So I'm going to book it to that um is there any way we can disable that if you can get into the uh um Montero and hard reset well that's kind of like our home so why don't you guys look for cham i'll go run over there and get a hard reset okay sounds good yeah okay so, Davis, I'm hearing that you are going alone. You're running through the ship towards the airlock. Right. right? All right. So I'm going to say that's probably going to take about a minute or so. So when I get to the minute mark on the timer, I will move you to the, um, to the airlock where you came in. And then you're going to need to do a mobility to get to the Montero. You're going to need to do a spacewalk, another jump from... The Cronus to the Montero, since it's very clear that the umbilical isn't working. You tried it the first time, and then the door was was sealed shut from the outside. Okay? What are the rest of you doing? Right. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep pace with uh, uh, Avis. Keep pace. Keep paper with Davis just in case she needs a hand because, uh, yeah, that, uh, I don't want to be going spacewalking, but, uh, she need to make sure that, uh, she doesn't go drifting off into space. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> um, Wilson will, um, say to John's, <laughs> is there some way of fixing that alarm the alarm isn't going I, off in the Cronus it's just going off in your helmets or in your suits you're hearing uh, it yeah. coming from the Montero ah, sorry John wouldn't yeah, hear this, hear this. Okay. Okay. John's wouldn't hear it at all unless he heard it coming through the speakers of your suit yeah sorry I thought it was the um it's not the Cronus that has the problem it's, yeah. <laughs> okay um I'd like everybody to take a take a stress at this point. Okay. Everybody should go up hey, one in stress. Hey. That is 100% fair. This situation hey, is just a wee bit stressful. All right, I think at this point we've counted down enough. Davis, you've gotten to the airlock. <coughs> Give me a mobility check. And I think, if I'm correct, did Miller, did you go with Davis? Yes, I did. Okay. No. Uh yes? Yeah, I said, I'm not jumping. You're not jumping. I'm keeping, I'm keeping hold of the, the tether to make sure if she if she misses, to jump, that she, yeah, got it. Okay, fair and enough. And I get, and from last time, I get a plus one mod to mobility. Superb. Let's go. Make it happen. The door <laughs> opens up. Holy fucking shit! Damn. What the heck? Okay. So wow, Davis, you are panting and running and sweating. Miller's trying to keep up with you. You boom, jam your hand onto the airlock door. It opens into space, and you see just darkness. You're breathing. You're panting. You're heavy. You know you've got to get over there, or else the whole kit and caboodle is going to go up with a big bang. You jump. Miller, the line goes taut.
And I think that you hear that coming through with Mother. That the detonation expiration goes out in one minute and you roll that panic roll. Go ahead and give me that panic roll, please, Leah. Fourteen. You go berserk. <clears throat> you end up just... snap. You take too big of a jump and you snap the tether. Miller, you... Uh, make a mobility check to see if you can grab it. Mobility or is your... Oh, it's the same thing, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to say that you just hear Davis screaming in rage and anger. She snaps the line. Miller, you grab onto it and you are yanked out the door into space with her. Oh, shit. You are both heading towards the Montero, flying through space. And you hear these numbers going through your head. And you hear this. The option to override detonation has now expired. expired. And you know with that... Boom. The, the ship will automatically self-destruct in five minutes. You're flying through space towards the Montero. I'd say 20 seconds later, boom, boom, your boots hit the Montero. What do you do? It's probably, if it goes, it's going to take out the other ship, right? Unless you have yeah. a, some exactly. way of getting the ship away from the Montero. Um, I'm the captain. I'm, I, I said to the captain, I said, go back. I'm scuttling the ship. Go. You can't okay. make this maneuver. I can. Oh. All right. Uh, I'll do that, and I leap back. Mobility roll, please. Uh, and what do I got to do to get this ship started? You have to um, get the engines running. The problem is that the engines are where Cham was, and he never got the engines running. I'm going to start heading that direction fast. Okay. Let me. I was going to say that yeah. um, Wilson would probably ask Johns that we need to get this ship moving to get, escape the explosion. We need to go. Where do we go? Okay, the only chance for all of you to survive is to get on board the Cronus. In this case, of course, for Davis, it is to get as far away as possible from the Montero before she detonates. Okay? So, I will say, what is it that you want to do, Leah? You enter the uh, airlock. <laughs> you enter. You're now on, to, on, on board the Montero. Lights are going. They're flashing through the hallways. What are you doing? I am sprinting full bore to the bridge, getting the engines full bore on and trajectory opposite direction of okay. the Kronos. If you turn and the engines on with the umbilical attached, it may yeah, damage, damage it may damage the Kronos. I've got this is why I'm first. I'll, 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 I'll be doing that. With, with my successes, on my ability, getting onto the uh, jumping from the Montero to the Cronus, I'm going to detach the umbilical from the Cronus. Okay, there's only one the or head. there's one or two ways to do that. I'm speaking fast because we don't really have that much time. You can either do it with a cutting torch or a strength roll, just just yanking the whole goddamn thing. It's up to you. Cutting torch, heavy machinery, right. or strength roll. Other PCs potentially could help if you need them to. Uh, I can only do it with strength, so... Whoosh. Okay, that's one success and three panics. Make your panic roll, please. Oh, shit, you hit oh. a freeze. You freeze. You just jam. You jam and you jam it with all of your strength and you just, uh, you realize you're not strong enough. Your stress level um, goes up by one and you are unable to push with your own strength by yourself the umbilical. Let's quit, let, let's cut over to Davis. Davis, you're in the pilot's chair. 
and mother's blaring at you. Make a piloting roll if you want to be able to get the ship as far away as you can from the Cronus. But it's going to be a hard one, so I need it with a minus two penalty. I've got a plus one mod to... So it's a piloting. minus one. Let's do it as a minus one. Oh god. Um, oh god. It's not. It's freezing. Why isn't it? Let me put my S. God, now you're stressing me out. You're stressing me out! <laughs> ah. I won't trust the DM. It's one not typing. minute! There's one minute left! It's not typing! <laughs> it's not typing! You want me to do it for you? Yes! Oh god! It's not typing. Oh god! Here we go. I apologize in advance if this... Of course, it Roll froze. 20 froze. Roll 20 was so stressed out. Roll 20 was too stressed out. Here we go. Leah Davis. Stupid. <laughs> Piloting roll. Sacrificing her life, it seems. One success, <laughs> no panic. <clears throat> oh my god. Guys. I can't refresh it either. Davis. Roll 20 is You refreshing. hit... 28, you hear this this number counting down, and you jam on the engines. They blast as you watch behind you the Cronus disappearing into the distance. Six, what is what goes through your mind in the last 15 seconds of your life? Katy Perry's fireworks song starts going off in my head. <laughs> and there is a humongous explosion as the Montero erupts into a nuclear blast. The Cronus hits or is hit by this wave of energy multiple times and all of you are rocked. Miller the door was open when the umbilical, of course, was attached. So I need you to make a mobility roll or you could be sucked into space. Oh, I'm going to push that. You can't. Oh, no, I can't, I can't push that. Shit. So Miller is sucked into space and begins free-falling, end over end, watching this ship being pushed in the opposite direction. And all that remains on the ship from the original cast are Wilson and Rye. <laughs> People that actually got attacked first are the ones that are still alive. Right? <laughs> this game... How does that work? ...is fucking sure. brutal! Oh my god. Sacrificial Mil man. No, listen, you did, you did the right thing. And I, I, I kept... The game says, set a 10 minute countdown, and do not deviate. And I found that wonderful... Countdown from aliens, and then Julie's fucking computer froze up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I might it it it's still frozen. So either I play like this and you roll for me. We might take a break. This, we might take I a mean, break to get it fixed because I think that's actually I, this is yeah. this this is a good place to take a like a mini break just to get your computer yeah. fixed, and we'll come back to figure so out sorry. the the remnants of this because Miller's gone, Davis is gone. I mean, Miller may be able to be... I don't know. You, we'll, we'll work it out. But Davis, your ashes, unfortunately. Your atoms. It was worth it. It was awesome. <laughs> what a way to There's go. There's any way to go out, man. Go out with a bang. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so we'll take a break. We'll come back uh, after we fix Julie's little problem. And we'll see you guys in a little bit. Hey, folks. We are back. Uh, hey, Raiders, who came in a few minutes ago, thank you so much for joining us. Hope you guys have a fun time watching our Alien, the role-playing game session. 
Um, looks like you guys are coming in from playing Walking Dead. Ooh, Walking Dead. I like, Free League makes some really great games, and I think Walking Dead, if it uses the same kind of system, I'm psyched. I, I might want to jump into that and try that too. But yeah, uh, we are coming back after a loss of multiple player characters. Um, one of whom has retained a new character that was part of the NPC retinue before. Uh, Andy has chosen to bring in uh, his version of Liam Flynn, the young nervous doctor. And uh, as for Julie, uh, who was playing um, uh, Leah Davis, we have a surprise coming perhaps sooner rather than later. Quick sort of check in on where everybody is on the ship. Uh, Wilson is obviously with Johns running through the ship after Johns released him because he, uh, Wilson inoculated himself. And the two of them ran down to um, uh, C deck, I believe. Uh, where the where the aforementioned engineer Cham, who went missing, went to go and turn the engines on. He wasn't able to do that because the power wasn't on. But he is now joined, or I should say they are now joined, by the newly outed synthetic Rye. Although I'm not sure if Rye should necessarily go by that name. It's up to it's up to her. It's up to you, Rye. I think I think she'll stick with Rye. Rye it is. So Flynn, you're still up uh, on a deck with Lori Clayton, the company agent, Johns, Rye, and Wilson. The three of you are wandering through C deck to try to get the engines back online. How far are the engines? It is quite hard to run. I think they're just to the south. Johns, since yes. you, you know the Cronus pretty well, actually, because you obviously are the officer on board the Cronus and have been, technically speaking, for 70 plus years, you are aware that um, to the southeast is where the reactor relay station is, which would enable you to shunt the newly turned on power to the engines, okay? It would take some time because clearly the ship, well, not clearly, but you would assume based on the explosion that's just occurred from the Montero that there may be a need to repair the engines. So you could turn on the relay control lickety split, but it may take some time and as well uh, you're going to need to go out onto the um, someone, I'm not saying you, but someone's going to have to go out to repair the engines outside the ship. You know that. Absolutely. So with that, I will tell everybody that we need to go to the relay room that is to our southeast. We will continue making our way there so that we can get to the relay station, get power back to the engines, and make sure that there's no faults. And I will volunteer Ray, since <laughs> synthetic being, to go outside of the ship to make any necessary engine repairs. Nicely done, Johns. Well done, very well delegated to Rye. How do you feel about that, Rye? Well, since you humans probably can't do it, I'll have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wilson's like, what's the computer? Fair. <laughs> That's totally fair. Um, cool. So, uh, yeah, you guys can go ahead and move uh, as far, uh, you know, far south and then probably east as, uh, to get to the reactor relay area. Mm -hmm. So, what is this right here? Uh, that's a terminal. 
you can access portions of the uh, of the systems on board the Cronus. Um, you can't obviously go to Mother you, uh, and and action any Mother actions, whatever it is, or interactions, I should say, unless you actually went directly to Mother. And technically speaking, the person who only would have access to Mother on board this ship is Johns. Because Johns is the uh, highest uh, rank officer on board. I would like to access the terminal. Okay. Make a ComTech roll. <clears throat> now, Rye, being a synthetic, you no longer have stress. You can't gain That's it. That's correct. You can't lose it. Okay. Unfortunately, you type into the uh, computer whatever commands to action, uh, you know, a terminal command into the into the system. It doesn't seem to recognize your command, Rai. Maybe it's an older system. Old piece of junk. Needs an update. So what's the quickest way out to the engines? Probably through the airlock. Now there are several airlocks. Um, one is um, not on this deck, not on cargo deck. Um, let me actually let me let me fact check that actually. Let me see if there are any ways to get out to the engines. Actually, the closest way to get to the engines, the fastest way to get the engine, is probably through D deck. D deck is actually the vehicle bay deck. It would be also where the um, equipment shed potentially would be. Um, and uh, yeah, there are in fact that I can see four airlocks that would bring you to the engine pods on D deck. So the ladder, the ladder in the next room to the south, does that go down to D? Yes, it does. It goes up and down. And that's that's where I will head. Is down. Fantastic. Um, now, of course, being a synthetic, yes, you can exist in space without air. But there are other concerns. Freezing, of course, because you are still a, although a synthetic organism, you'd still uh, be subject to the extreme temperatures outside in space. You might start to freeze. I never took off my helmet. Superb! You still have the ability to use it, and you don't even need to use air anymore. All right. Cool. All right. So Rye disappears and goes down to D-Deck. Johns and Wilson, you still stay on C-Deck in order to activate the reactor relay array. We need to go through the junction room and... Is that correct? Yeah, you're, right there. you're yeah. going to need to go south from this junction room and then east. South all the way through the bottom of it? Correct. Self here. Yep, no problem. If you get stuck in the doors, let me know. That sometimes tends to happen in Roll20. Yeah, the doors are wall. It needs to be right here. I think you may have sure. made it. Did you make it out? Did you make Yes, you I'm made it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Super. Look at me. You made it to reactor relay control with Wilson. And, uh, um,. I'm going to uh, ask Wilson to see, because I'm assuming we're going to have to do some rolls here to get the engines re-engaged. Um, and I'm assuming that would be heavy machinery. Is that correct? So, no, it's not, or, heavy, it's not heavy machinery for the engines to be... Or ComTech? But it would be ComTech to get uh, the... Um, let me just double check here. I believe it would be ComTech to get the engines up and running. Let me check here. Yeah. Um, really, yeah. It's just it's it's going into the reactor control room here where you are and and activating the shunt of the uh, power to the engines themselves. Okay. That would take a single ComTech roll. Right, let's go ahead and do it. Can we both roll for it? Uh, do you, well, here's the question. Do you guys want, one can help another. One can give a plus one with a help action. It's sort of a, it's, it's basically a very small group action, right? Whoever has the highest skill can do it with an assistance, a plus one from somebody else who's actually, 
uh, uh, performing the action. So I have a three for Comtech. Okay. What about you, Wilson? Is this plus Comtech? Yeah, it's just Comtech. No, it's it's both. It's 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 Comtech plus Wits, right? Yeah. So what's your total with Comtech and Wits? Yeah. That's my total with Comtech and Wits is four. Okay. John's? Three. Th three in Comtech. Do you have any in Wits? Uh, so I have three in Wits, none in Comtech. Oh, so there you go. So it's so it's actually more beneficial for Wilson to do it with John's assisting him. Okay. So oh, we'll do, roll we'll do the switcheroo. I'm pulling rank. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <clears throat> Do you have any talents that p potentially may help with Wilson? I don't know. Some people have talents that can help with this kind of shit. Nope. No go? I don't have any talents. I only have one, but it's not in this situation. All right. Yeah. John's just I gives... Can, I can help assist here. Yeah, you can definitely give him a plus one because it is a group action. Plus one. Remember not to hit the plus yeah. sign when you're doing a, a modification. Oh, I did that. You did? Oh, maybe it may have been, you know, it still went through. It didn't sort of bonk out. So I think maybe they fixed the character sheet, which is great. Yeah. All right, so you did so get a couple of... Yeah, so here's the thing, right? Um, you're stressed out, clearly. Johns mm -hmm. is telling you, get this fucking engine up and running. And you're like, I just work for the company, man. What the hell are you just... And Johns is starting to like, you know do something maybe to show off that he's in charge here who knows <laughs> um that's up to that's up to you how you guys want to role play this i'm holding my stun baton yeah that's good that's super yeah you're just like giving the the whole like tap tap into the middle of your hand with your stun baton and wilson's like what the fuck is this am i, am I being like gang breast into this shit yeah a little bit of Loki style. I'm gonna just put you into the <laughs> into the abyss. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, uh, Wilson, you're getting serious, mad, ang uh, angry dad energy off of Johns, <clears throat> uh, which makes you, uh, you know, reconsider your life choices. But uh, all things being what they are, you did have successes. You did roll the panic, and you just got a little bit of a, sh a little shake in your hands as you're able to. Tap, 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 and then you hear a pleasing groan of energy uh, being uh, shunted from the main reactor to the engines. So the engines have life now. The question is, can they be used long term without the repair? Well, Rye's going to fix that, ain't ya, Rye? Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, at least that's the intention. <laughs> Sabotage! <laughs> okay. So, Rai, you um, head to the D-deck, which is where the vehicle bay seemingly is. I'm going to bring you there. Um, as you exit the vehicle bay, uh, you, or I should say enter the, 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 the area with the vehicle bay, there um, are several... See if I can give you a description of what's in the vehicle bay on D-Deck. Here we go. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Here we go. So most of the vehicle complement of the Cronus, you would assume would be on board, is in fact missing. There's actually just only two ATVs aboard. No RTVs, larger vehicles. And both ATVs are lying on their sides sort of haphazardly and it's very clear that they weren't secured either probably during takeoff or after what occurred with the explosion of the Montero and you look up and you see the catwalks and loading cranes <clears throat> above you um, hanging down from deck C where you just were and there are deep shadows everywhere there seem to be quite a lot of places to hide, shall we say. Well, I've got my shotgun out, so... You sure do. I'll definitely keep an eye out. Okay. Now, 
The vehicle bay, as you step into it, shotgun drawn, is the least quote-unquote affected area on the ship. And when I say affected, I say that because as you guys traipse through the hallways, deck B, deck C, now deck D, occasionally you will see those unfortunate individuals of the Cronus who met their end in a quite horrific manner. You also see, as you pass by them, tiny little lemon-shaped, lemon-sized orbs, maybe three or four of them, all sort of stuck together in a clump, either in a section of the ceiling or affixed to the floor or one of the walls. Obviously, considering what you know about these eggs that the crew of the Cronus found on that derelict planet, you give them, I assume, a wide berth. But Definitely. Do you see that in the air around them hangs a miasma of tiny little microscopic motes? And it is this material that you assume was spoken about by the crew of the Cronus as what caused the original infections on that planet. But as you arrive on deck D, you see that it actually has very few of these items. It's just really dusty from disuse and the settled debris of what occurred just on board your ship before. Well, that was spooky as shit. Something just <laughs> something just fell off my wall for no reason that... whatsoever. That that scared the fuck out of me. That might be an omen. <laughs> Not even the DM is safe in this game. Guys, <laughs> was is there? A, okay, I am very sorry if I have offended anybody in this house. You do not have to scare me like that. That really? Okay. Guys, I'm just a streamer. <laughs> Honestly, I don't have very much meaning to my life than my family and this stream, so please don't fucking scare me to death. Like, just keep it chill. <laughs> Help! Just, you know, as long, I find that as long as you're nice to the ghosts, they usually are nice back. I thought I was nice! Usually. I thought I was really nice. I don't go to haunted houses, guys. You know that? I don't go into haunted houses. I go to the ones at the fun parks, but not real ones. Nope. That's a big negative no-no for me. Now you're just well, you know, to a haunted house. I punched it somebody. Is a... I'm a big <laughs> fucking scaredy cat. Sorry. That's just me in a nutshell. It is a New York apartment. I wonder how many people have died in there. Shut up! Just shut the fuck up, Ben. <laughs> You're welcome. God damn it. Andy, you live in England. What do they do? They have more ghosts in England than we have in New York, right? I hope. Think? Oh, oh they're fine. Just give me a cup of tea and a biscuit. I can't make tea at this time of night, dude. Shit. It's, first, it's six o'clock in the morning. Dude, my stress just went from a two to like a seven. I'm sweating. Jeez. Oh my god, that scared the shit out of me. Okay, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. If I don't look behind me, it won't happen, right guys? Right? Okay. Okay. Don't look at the alien hanging above I'm fine, I'm fine. This is fine. This is fine. We're all fine here now. How are How you? Are How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, god damn. Boring conversation anyway. Yeah, no. Listen, if there was a conversation, that would that would be really not boring. That would be Well, now that I know I can't die if I don't turn around, this game just got a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. Okay. Just don't turn around. All right. So where's the airlock? Yeah, so uh, let me just keep going. All right. So <laughs> Yeah, so let me just uh, shift ping you. All right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, shift ping. Boom. So there's our friend, Rye. The airlock is all the way on the other side of the vehicle bay. Um, over here. Got you. 
I'll make my way there. Okay. Make an observation roll. <clears throat> I thought it was my job to spook you, not the other way around. <sighs> Ooh, no successes. Apparently I'm not, too not the most observant Not robot. too observant as an, as an android. That's okay. Do you want to push that? You can't. I can't. Oh, that's right. Because <laughs> because androids cannot push their Roll rolls. For <laughs> Roll for panic, Matt. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, chat. <laughs> I have to be nice to chat. They help me with my money, so I can't tell them to go fuck themselves. But thanks, chat. We just need someone to um, donate a stress point, but give that to Matt. You don't need to donate anything. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm yeah. fine. He, he says surrounded by fire. Yeah. No. This is that was messed up. Okay. I'm gonna leave it alone in my brain. It's gone now. It's it's over here. Um. So <clears throat> yeah, you get to what seems to be um an elevator, and as you pass it, you do see that over here is potentially where you are looking for. Um, an airlock that would bring you outside. All right. Okay. So you, you see a door. It does say airlock A2. Sorry, D2. All right. I'm going to step into the airlock. Okay. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. Um, let me see something here. Oh. I never took the doors off here, but that's okay. I'll take them off now. Okay, you press the button. And both the inner and outer airlock doors... Well, the inner uh, airlock door opens. The outer lock is closed until the inner door closes behind you. Okay. But as you look out the small porthole of the, uh, of the airlock you spy two things that are just disturbing as shit. One, you just see a halo of energy from perhaps, I don't know, four or five kilometers away that's still dissipating. And you know that that was the Montero. And the second thing that you see, which is perhaps just as distressing, is that as you look out towards this halo of energy still dissipating in the distance, there is silhouetted in front of it a single humanoid-looking figure tumbling through space. Well... Maybe we can catch up to him if I get the engines fixed. It's You are at least a mile out from that person that you can see silhouetted in the, in the corona of energy. If you want to get out there, you'd be a ways away. No, no, no. I mean, if I get the engines fixed, maybe we can catch up to him. I'm not trying to jump out in the middle of nothing. Okay. Fair enough. I'm synthetic, not stupid. <laughs> Take a bonus point. I like that when you quote in uh, any alien movie, especially with the right. Right, with the right cadence. Take a bonus point with and uh, in, in any role, give yourself a bonus point. Okay, so you I assume activate the outer airlock and head out onto the ship. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, I'll bring you there. There you go. Boop. So you see now that the outer <clears throat> surface of the ship has four massive uh, engines, two of which you can see at this point. Uh, engine pod one and engine pod three. You estimate that it will take you about three turns and a successful heavy machinery roll to have the engines... Um, uh, uh, the the, I'm I'm not a technical guy, so you'll have to excuse me. 
but you can see that there is damage to the engines, most likely from what occurred, um, and that the engine, um, the the engine rims themselves are sort of bent and crumpled. So it would take you some time to try to write them into shape so that when the engines came on, they wouldn't just melt the rims and have you go spinning off in random directions. Got you. Okay. Well, then I will get to work. Okay. Give me a heavy machinery roll. Let's see how well you do. Uh, um, I'm going to give my bonus on this one. Superb. Let's do it. Two successes. Look at that. Do you want to stunt your heavy machinery roll? Because all you needed was one. Here are this heavy machinery yeah. stunts. There you go. I'm going to bank a heavy machinery. Yes. Gain a plus one to a later skill roll relating to it. Perfect. I would have hoped that you would have chosen you break it permanently. But what do I know? <laughs> you know. I would say you got this. You don't have to do it again. In the exact same challenge in the future? Yeah, exactly. Repair the next engine. It's Rai's choice. Rai can choose the how he, uh, they want to uh, mm -hmm. use this this banked plus run. Yeah. Well, um, do I only need to make the one out here now, or am I going to have to make two? Uh, yeah, according to what I uh, have seen from the, the module here, it says it, it will take three turns of work and a single heavy machinery roll. So that's just a matter of timing, right? The okay. Three turns of then work. I'm, uh, and one machinery roll. Which, so you, which I will, you did, yeah. I will bank the other one. Super. Okay. Now, let's turn our attention, since uh, Johns and Wilson have done their part, and Rye has done theirs, to our new, newly found friend, Mr. Liam Flynn. Uh, hey. Rory, 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 uh, um. Yes, Liam. Uh, do, do, do you think, um, do, do you think we, we, we get out of this? I think if everybody pulls their weight and doesn't crack under pressure, I think we'll be just fine. Uh. I don't, I don't, I don't like this, I don't like this. Uh, um, I need a beer. I need, you need, I need a, a beer. You need a beer. Okay, well, tell you what, why don't we just go to the commissary and maybe we can get something to settle your nerves. How does that sound? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that'd, that'd be good. Great. Follow me. And she exits the examination room. Um, and let me see where the, the nearest place that she and you would go to to get a beer. Uh, wouldn't be on a deck, I can tell you that. There's just cryo and mother and the examination room. That's pretty much it. So I think that it would probably be... Yeah, the mess hall. That's a perfect place. That's on B deck. So a few minutes later, you guys, uh, both of you will uh, arrive on B deck. We bring you there. And end up at the mess hall. Now, the mess hall, um, based on the information that I've been given here regarding the state of the ship, as you open the doors uh, to the mess hall, neither one of, uh, of you or Lori have spacesuits, right? So you're confident that your inoculation is going to save you from the potential hundreds of thousands of moats that are floating through the air scrubbers. But... Suffice it to say, you do see some handiwork of the creatures 
that both you and she were witness to back on LV-1133. These creatures you remember were your friends, were your peers. But then they changed. And I don't blame you as a character from being scared out of your wits. <laughs> Hell, I was scared out of my wits just a few minutes ago. But I think that of all of the characters currently present and alive, I think it's very likely that Liam Flynn has kind of lost it a little bit. So it comes as a great, um, a great help to Flynn's well-being uh, that you open the door to the mess hall, and although you see that the food stores were ravaged, <laughs> it actually kind of looks like a pack of rabid raccoons have been through here, um, and most of the actual exposed food stores are rotten and covered in mold from being exposed uh, over time, 72 years. For some reason or another, you see something kind of odd. Mr. Flynn, and that is that someone has been making origami animals out of metallic paper and setting them up around the room. Hmm. Weird. Yeah. Very strange. Yeah. Anyway, she opens the uh, now powered up refrigeration unit and opens it and you see that there are cans of uh, liquor, uh, of uh, sorry, alcoholic beverages, as well as standard, you know, water, etc. And um, she sort of taps the, the can on the table. She says, you never know. And she pulls back the tab, and you don't hear a It just opens, like it peels away from the metallic top. It's probably going to be a little flat. And she hands it to you. Mm. Yeah. Whatever. It might come on this. That's actually a good point. Beer is actually a consumable <laughs> in this game. And it actually has an effect um, uh, of having a minus one to your stress level, but also a minus one to all wits-based skills. Okay. So keep that in mind, if you wouldn't. Uh, I would say it. You know, it's 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 not a heavy uh, alcoholic content beer. Probably only for like maybe a turn or so that you'll be a little woozy. It's been a while. So, Liam, she sort of taps her fingers on the table. I want to ask you a question. We didn't really know each other very well when the mission was occurring, but I wanted to find out a little bit more about you. She sort of like leans on the table uh, on her elbows and put her, puts her face in her, in her hands. Tell me more about you. Well, it's... Just... Oh, I, I got my um my, my doctors uh back on earth many me well not too too long ago um I mean maybe like oh god I don't know uh but um this thing I, this 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 cure that I was I was working on I was working on it. I think I think Wilson was right. I, I I don't think um I don't think it's been tested enough. I'm sorry, your stuttering is adorable but quite annoying. Let me see if I can understand what it is that you said. You said you think that the inoculation isn't safe. Not hundred percent sure. I, I 
I, I, I think it sh we should have done a, a bit more testing. She grabs you by the collar and lifts you a little bit off of, onto your toes. And she says, let me let you know something absolute, Liam. There is nothing wrong with the inoculation. Do I make myself clear? I, I, I'm not going to tell anyone else. I'm not going to tell anyone else. I, I, I just want to go home. I do too, Liam. And she sort of gently takes her hands off of your collar. And if you really want to get home, you won't tell anyone. Do you understand? I understand. I understand. My, 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 lips are, my, my, my lips are sealed. Shut up. And then she grabs a beer from the fridge and um, pops the top off and chugs it. Now, what the hell is that? And she points over to a, a place uh, where the sort of one of the tables from the mess hall has seemingly fallen over, most likely from the turbulence from the explosion. And there is a shape underneath one of the tables. The hell is that? You see that? No, no, no. Uh, I, I've been down to, to look underneath the table. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to make a roll, or...? I don't think you need to make a roll. But you bend down and do what? Uh, I have a look. Um, to, to see what, what it is, to see if I can get closer. Okay. As you get closer, you do see that it seems to be a, a humanoid-looking shape. And it's uh, sort of at a very strange angle, slumped against the far wall under this table. Okay. But and it's not a member of the uh owner's crew. Uh, no, the sorry, uh, uh, the good uh, Montero Mon Montero crew. I mean. Definitely not a member of the Montero crew, because well, they're either dead or they're in different places around the around the ship. But what's interesting is that it can't be a member of the Cronus crew either. Because if that's the case, then number one, they'd be sort of skeletal at this point or horribly mangled or ravaged. This figure that you see under the table next to the wall is in perfectly s sort of normal condition. Albeit for the fact that this figure's body is at sort of weird angles, sort of strangely, um, strangely arranged is the best way I can put it. Um, using uh, my medical skill to pull towards it, check its pulse. Okay. Um, you flip over the body to get uh, a handle on the arm. And as you flip over the body, you see that it is a woman. Um, a young woman. She has um, a, a short, um, dark bob of hair, and her eyes are open. And you also see that the back of her head is dripping with white fluid. Another android. So oh shit! Be no Not her. God damn it. <sighs> okay, yes, that's Ava. You don't remember Ava, do you? No. Yeah, you didn't interact very much with her, I can remember. 
She's a company android. She was my attaché. I wondered what happened to her. We ask that she um, stay aboard the ship um, when we were going into cryo and guard it against the <clears throat> against those things. I guess you didn't do a very good job. Uh, can she be repaired? I assume. I don't know how to repair an android, though. <laughs> I don't have the skills. Perhaps one of the other monkeys from the Montero does, though. Yeah. Um. Maybe. Maybe. Uh. Sh sh shall I give them a call on the intercom? I guess so. Doesn't matter to me. Leave her here. Take her with us. Doesn't matter. Oops. The intercom. Uh. Guys. Guys. Uh. Um. We, we, we may have some help. Um, and someone who's got a, a bit of technical know-how, um, who knows how to fix uh, androids, uh, can, can can you come to the mess hall to to help us, please? I think uh, Wilson and Johns, you hear that over the intercom. That sound like your medic. Uh, very well. So with that, we will start making our way to the upper deck so that we can go ahead and oh, meet up with him in the mess hall. Okay. Are we finished here? I believe that you are, but you have to wait for another maybe five or ten minutes for the engines to be repaired um, by by Rai. So, okay. Do, will we need to use the computers when they're finished repair to get them turned on or will we be able to do that physically from the bridge as well yeah you you do not you can do that from the bridge you can do that um uh, at for sure uh at the bridge or or even at mother if if you have the ability to do so and i think that you do because you are second in command very well so we'll go ahead since everything that we need to do where we are currently is completed we will go ahead and start making our way through the ship to get where we need to go. Okay. Does Rai respond in some regard? Or is um, she busy? Rai, I think, is outside the ship, so you can contact her through the comms in the same way, if you'd like. I mean, uh, would, have, um, would Rai have heard that? Yes, uh, I think Rai would definitely have. Because yeah. they're still that's in, a, that's in the, the suit. That's the point I was getting at. Because I think Rai's probably got the best heavy Rai, you're here. muted. I would be happy to repair your android as soon as I am done repairing the engines. <laughs> Anything good. else you would like me to repair <laughs> on the way? My joints. My lungs. <laughs> I can fix them, My but leg. I don't think you'll like it. My sense of safety? How about that? <laughs> Would you like me to repair the thing that fell off of your wall, Matt? No! Because <laughs> they'll just drop it off again. <laughs> Fucking hell. Okay. So, um... Julie, I have just sent you... Something through Discord. And if you have any questions, <clears throat> let me know. So yeah, the, the Johns are heading back to the bridge area or yeah john and oh my god the yeah johns and john john and it's like it's like uh cagney and lacy right john yeah. and johns we're the yeah. johnses the johnses 
This is you guys have the perfect team up. I do That's have a friend named John John. <laughs> John John? I had a there was a yeah, guy on, on Sesame Street named John John. He was the guy who spoke to, to Cookie Monster. Remember that guy? John John, can you count to three? Nobody? Am I the only person? Am I really old? Fuck. Never mind. Well, uh, well I mean I don't uh, remember that guy. I remember Cookie Monster. Look it up. It's no, actually, wait. It was it was Harry the Monster that John John spoke to, not Cookie Monster. <laughs> Look it up on YouTube. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's JJ Wilson, so the other J could be an also a John. So John John Johns. Are you saying you're J Jonah J Wilson? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> What's going it's, it's on? JJ here? Wilson. That, yeah. Yeah, cool. Gil Spider Man. <laughs> So that all makes sense, except for the character sheet that you... You know, there's this, this one guy at the way you headquarters. He made fishes of this android that goes around burning white shit everywhere. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Let's calm down, dude! <laughs> Just take it easy. I don't know. <laughs> Did you tell him to put duct tape on it? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Many a time. Oh, Lord. Wow, we are going in that direction. Okay, fair. That's fine. No anyway. worries. All right, so Julie... So this character sheet does not look like the other one did. No, it shouldn't, because it okay. is a synthetic character sheet, and it's also an okay. NPC. But you still have the same, yeah. um, the same skills... Um, and you should have, from what I remember, the same, um, the same stuff, right? If you click on character, then it should show everything in your previous character. It should look just oh, like your character. There sheet. it goes. Yep. Got it. Go. There it goes. And if you'll notice that being a synthetic, you have higher strength, higher agility, uh, than your average human. You also can't take stress. There we go. And you have your own personal agenda. But you haven't been turned on yet because you're still busted. Uh. Which is fine. And since Rai doesn't breathe uh, air, there's no need for having Rai to uh, roll me an air supply roll. Yeah. It's nice. Oh, okay. I was unaware of this. Uh, it looks like Chad is reminding me that Julie still has a piece of gear to find that was given to her. Uh, by chat. So, yeah, Julie. That was before we had the raids. Yeah, that was before the raids totally distracted the fuck out of me. All right, it's fine. Yeah, hit me with a D10 there, Julie. Okay. Hopefully, it's not. Is a, it a synthetic repair kit? It's a synthetic candy bar. I get you. Oh, I think it might be a candy bar. Hold on. Found gear. No, it's a stun baton. <laughs> That's perfect, actually. <clears throat> That'll work. I think Ava. Uh, you had a stun baton tucked into your belt before you were Perfect. uh before you were um disconnected shall we say so i'll go into your character sheet right now and add the stun baton to your inventory and to your weapons Boom. There you go. You got it. I see it. All right. So let's fast forward a smidge in time. Another turn or two. Rye, I think that you finish uh, reshaping the rims of the engines after, you know, using whatever tools that you have, as well as your ridiculous android strength in order to perform that action. So the, the engines are now in perfect shape. The engines are, are, are able to be used for certain. I'm going to let you know a couple more things, folks. Um, considering you're on the Cronus and you're going to be for a while, this is where you're going to need to be. And you're going to need to be on the Cronus for, well, until you can get home. So what is important is, besides surviving horrible alien monsters, is getting the appropriate things in shape for this ship to be um, 
appropriate for your change of plans, because the Cronus is your only way home. You've already got the engines uh, fixed. The other thing that you're going to, or the other two things that you're going to need to do, you realize this probably, John's, as you're, um, as you're uh, helping to get the engines back together, is number one, you need to get the air scrubbers um, cleaned. Because the air scrubbers clearly have some kind of residue in them that is causing this stale uh, air to be resident within the ship. So that's, someone has got to go in there and clean them out. And then the last thing that you're going to need to do is fix the comms array. You come to realize, I think, after a certain period of time that the comms array has been busted as well. That the only thing that it was doing was repeating that distress call that you set up all those years ago. But beyond that, you're going to need to go to the comms array, which is actually on the front top of the ship. Not where the engine is, but at the top front of the ship. And repair it. That will require a spacewalk. That will require another 40 minutes of work, which is four turns, and a comm tech roll, not a heavy machinery roll. Okay? Did that all make sense, folks? Yes. Super. Okay. Are the Johnses getting close to the mess hall? At this let's point? let's say uh, yes. Let's say the Johnses are in fact uh, by the mess hall. Let me move you guys from that space where you were uh, to to the uh, to the mess hall. And I will say as well that um, Rye, you finish your action. You're back on um, on deck D. Within a turn or two, you're back on deck C if you want to be as well. It's up to you. Perfect. Okay. The Johnses make their way through deck C up to deck B, and then from there towards <clears throat> the mess hall. And I will shift ping. And there they are. I have no vision if it matters. I will Maybe. give you... A, yeah, I'm going to give you a token right okay. now. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put you right in here. Just turn on yet. That's what you can yeah, do. no, no, totally fair. I just have to have you turn it on and then give you the token. Because, look, I'm going to be perfectly honest here. There's a lot of people dying in this fucking game, so I got to consistently change characters all the time. It's fun, but it's also a little bit uh, time consuming. Yes. So, let me see if I can fix that right now. Aha! Success. Excellent. You don't have any stress either. Okay, so there we go. We've got the four of you. So you are, technically speaking, Ava, you are um, broken because you're turned off until you can get repaired by somebody who can fix you. Um, Flynn is there. Johns is there. The Johnses are there. Rye, I think it probably takes you another... It depends on where you want to go, Rye. Do you want to start work on something else, or do you want to meet them all in the mess hall? Um, I want to try that uh, computer terminal again, and Super. then I'm headed to the mess hall. Cool. Hit me up with a Comtech roll. What exactly are you trying to do with that terminal? Um, log in and see what info they didn't tell us about their little experiments. Cool. And actually... Um, I have a banked Comtech success. Super. Let's go. So I'm going to do that. Do I still need to roll? You have a banked Comtech plus one or success? Um, I thought it was a success. Maybe it's a plus one. Let me check the Comtech what? stunts. Plus one modification to a later skill roll relating to this one. That's it. Okay. Yep. So you get a plus one bonus. And you get one success with that plus one bonus. Who knew? Yay. Super. So yeah, you log in and you hack your way through to 
What? Tell me what exactly you're looking for. I'm looking for any information on their encounter with the on the planet, with the creatures, what happened in the ship afterward. Okay. Here's what you find. The Cronus was launched in 2110. And you see this, I'm, I'm giving you all this in, in the format of an information dump, but this would come in journal records coming from individuals on this ship. Um, individuals whose names you, some of whom you recognize, um, others uh, that, that you don't recognize. Like you see the names, um, uh, uh, you see uh, the names um, uh, Colonial Officer Reed, um, Lieutenant. You see the name uh, J Albert Johns. You see the name Laurie Clayton. Um, and then you also see some other names like Smith and Benefice and um, let me just double check. I got the the name here. Correct. Because it's been a while. Yeah, you see the name Captain Aloysia Lugar. Making a lot of these... A lot of these journal entries. Now, those okay. of you who are absolutely spot on remembering the the heart of darkness series that we did will recognize that name and if you don't recognize it watch heart of darkness <laughs> hey what's happening raiders thanks for joining us here on slices um happy to have you let's delve directly then into what you find rai in this comm system yeah yeah. Okay. So when they land, so when uh, the Cronus was launched in 2010, their mission was quite simple: locate samples of a chemical agent. And this chemical agent had a very strange name. It was a sort of a list of letters and symbols and numbers and all that stuff. And I'm going to put it in chat. That's the chemical agent AO three nine five nine X dot nine one dash fifteen. Part of the journal entries let you know that this chemical agent has been found on other planets within the galaxy before, but Weyland Yutani wanted to secure it upon a specific planetoid called LV 1113 in the 26 Draconis system. When the crew of this ship, the crew actually was assigned to land on the planet and obtain samples of this chemical. But they found that the chemical had caused mutations in some of the planet's life forms, transforming those native flora and fauna into horrifying monsters. When the science team obtained this material. They experimented on it. And they turned it into something called the 26 Draconis strain. This black liquid became a sort of black gel which they could utilize as a sort of um, counter agent to the material that was floating around uh, from these neomorphic moats birthed from egg sacs on the planet's surface. Because members of the crew, those that were exposed to these moat spores, were hosts to monsters of their own. They gave birth to these creatures that expelled from their heads in the same fashion that you remember seeing um, Dr. Cooper the same. What's worse is these creatures 
these small insect like creatures would quickly mature and grow into horrifying monsters that would stalk members of the crew and eviscerate them. Chaos soon broke, up, broke out during this mission, and there was a mutiny. The science module on the Cronus, this module called the Chiron, was ejected and left behind on the planet's surface. And the surviving crew escaped the planetoid into space. <clears throat> However, not long after, discovering that some among them had been infected by these spores before departing the planet, the remaining scientists, including Dr. Cooper, used a derivative, a, a strain of this 26 Draconis material and used it to inoculate the crew against these spores. Now, the doctors administering it, at least at first, were unaware that their cure was not completely safe, nor that it could cause those creatures or those individuals that were inoculated to begin to change and mutate themselves into creatures that the journal simply calls abominations. But, as some of the inoculated transformed and others didn't, the crew of the Cronus failed to make the correlation between the 26 Draconis cure and the overall result. Nonetheless, as the ship became overrun with horrifying mutant and abominate creatures, the scientists and those left alive realized that they were in over their heads. They barricaded themselves on cryodeck and left the ship's sole synthetic, Ava-6, to maintain the infested ship. They put themselves in stasis and hoped for a miracle. And that's what you'll learn from your Comtech role. Excellent. What else, right. what else do you want uh, to do there, Rai, now that you've gotten the info dump of info dumps? Um, is there anything else in here worth looking at? Uh, just pictures of naked ladies, um, strangely enough. It's under a folder called Prawn. I don't know why. Weird. <laughs> it happens. All right, I will uh, head up to the mess hall then. All right. Rye, with this information in your mind, you know that there is uh, another synthetic, someone who they found, and you make the connection that this is Ava-6. This is the synthetic that was left on board to safeguard the ship. So you arrive in the mess hall, and pretty much everybody that you know is still alive is in the mess hall. You see that the place is a shambles, the food is rotten. Um, Flynn and, uh, and, and Clayton are drinking beers, seemingly unaware of the direness of their situation. And the two Johns are sort of looking at each other. What, nobody does anything while I'm busy? How about while oh. I repair this thing, you guys get working on the scrubbers? I, I don't know <clears throat> I don't know the first thing about mechanical stuff uh, 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 if, if if you got a if, if you got an ouchie I can fix it I don't think you can fix my ouchie and I'm going to get to work on Ava okay I mean it, it, I don't know much but I mean 
we can all give it a go, I assume. Right? The sooner we well, fix this ship up, the sooner we get back to civilization. Right. Um. Well, Wilson, I'm going to need you to take this stun baton with you and go work on the scrubbers while I assess and work on our food situation that we are currently having, looking at the state of this current current state of this mess hall. As I said, I'm, I'm not that experienced in that, but I'll give it a go. It, you will be fine. If you need any assistance, give us a call over the comms. And... Okay, uh, now which direction am I going? And he gets out his, um, the, the PDA he was using before and find it out which deck he needs to go to to get to the air scrubbers. Okay. So, the air scrubbers, if you're going to need, if, if you're going to want to fix up uh, the air scrubbers, you're going to need to go to deck A, because that's yeah. where the, if I remember correctly, yeah, it's right here, deck A. Yeah, there is a, a, a shaft only accessible via the ventilation and maintenance shafts on deck A. And Matt, can you move the stun baton from my sheet to his? Uh, you can just remove I it. And, take... Yeah, you can, he, yeah, you can just remove it and he'll take it from the compendium and put it on his sheet. All right, yeah. sounds good. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. And Wilson will move out, try and figure out how to get these air scrubbers back working properly. As I said, he's not the best qualified for it, but... Well, you have to do things that you're not qualified for sometimes. Ain't that the truth. Mm-hmm. Yep. So... Okay. So you're going down to deck A to fix the air scrubbers, <clears throat> am I correct there? John? That is correct. All right, John Wilson. Down you go to deck A. <laughs> Anyone else want to do any of the other remaining tasks? The engines are okay. The air scrubber's yet to be done, but yet there's that comms array that still needs to be fixed. <clears throat> That's going to require a spacewalk and some comm tech work. Who's willing to go? I vote the synthetic again. Hmm. I'm busy no. working on the other synthetic. Rai, you realize that it's going to take, as per the rules, one shift in order to um, repair Ava. She's had uh, a, a lot of damage done to her um, synthetic cerebral cortex, and so it'll take you some time with the tools that you have and the time that you need to fix her up. Any chance that you have a synthetic repair kit on this station or on the ship? Um, let me see if Johns may know where that may be. Let's check. I'm checking the decks to see if that's the case. Uh, da, 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 da. Not in A, not in B. Um, hmm. Not in, sorry folks. Um, actually, you know what? It doesn't say that there, yeah, I, I looked through all of the different car, a, a lot of all the different decks and I don't see a synthetic repair kit with any of them. But I think Clayton would probably speak up and say, well, on she's sort of a little woozy. She says, I think I may have one um, in my storage unit on C deck. And you see that there are like three or four beer cans arrayed around her. She soused. <laughs> of course. 
Wait, wait. Do you have a problem? Do you have a problem with me? And she pokes uh, Rye in the chest. Do you? Hmm? I'm going to snatch your finger. Ugh! And bend it back just slightly. Ow! You hurt. I have a problem with drunk humans that don't do their job. I don't like you at all. John's. The feeling is mutual. John's, that was an assault. Don't you believe that was an assault? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I saw that. I'll go with this. She what has a boo boo. You, you should fix it. What do you mean? What are you supposed to do? You have a brain. Use it. Well, uh, uh, the the synthetic is much stronger than I am. What do you want me to do to it? <sighs> you know, Johns. Uh, God, I uh, I don't even know what to say about you anymore. And she sort of like walks past you, Johns, and you can just get a you just get a huge whiff of uh, uh, just stale alcohol breath as she walks past you. And then she just stops. And she turns towards you, Johns, and says, I don't like fucking, and she screams at you, cowards, and she jumps on you. And that's where we're going to stop for tonight. <laughs> Very nice. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, nice. That's, that's good. All right. Well, that's not technically the end of Act Two. I think we can push Act Two, Part Two, maybe into our next session. There's a couple more things I think we can get under our belt to see what's happening with all these crazy motherfuckers. I have never killed <clears throat> in a single period of time two characters in Alien RPG as fast as I did tonight. I consider it a badge of honor <laughs> that the two of you took that bullets for the team. I appreciate you so much. I really do. Um... Maybe it was, in fact, the ghost of Miller that was behind me. <laughs> it's messed up. Messed up. All right. Yeah. Um, we're going to say goodnight. Uh, of course, thank you to all the awesome people who came into chat uh, in Twitch uh, to help out with the raids. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please give us a like and a subscribe if you like what you saw because we're coming at you with more <clears throat> RPG content every week on Thursdays and most Fridays. Check out our schedule on Twitch, and you'll see when we're coming out on YouTube as well. Um, until that time, uh, I say to you the same thing that I say to everybody here on Twitch, um, which is, go see Alien fucking Romulus. No, I'm just kidding. I, that is coming out next week, and this is super relevant. Um, Alien Romulus. Really... Really cool. Like, really, really happy with that. I'm, 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 I'm going to go see it, and I really hope it's as good as I know Fed Alvarez can be. Another last thing yeah. that I want to say as well is, um, for those of you at Gen Con, you're aware that Alien RPG has a second edition coming out sometime in the near future, yeah. and I am super psyched to get my hands on that because let's just keep on keeping on with Alien RPG as far as we can push it. I'm super psyched to have all of you amazing people watch us do this content and I'm more than happy to just have awesome people like the people I have here arrayed around this wonderful board uh, provide you with awesome stuff um, so the big wigs the big wigs talk to us just a little bit oh, about the the new oh, tell aliens them, this is great sorry let me let me let me give a preface Ben let me give a preface so Ben and Julie went to Gen Con the, if, if, if you guys want to listen in, this shouldn't take that much more time. But Ben and Julie, yes, you met the people at Free League. Do tell. Do tell. Yes. So we met the uh, the we met first. We met the guy that is responsible for the One Ring. Okay. And the new Moria book, okay. which by the way is awesome. Okay. I got that in the mail before we went, and uh, and then he introduced us to the CEO, uh, Tomas. Tomas. Halberstam, we like it. Right? Yes. And uh, they were both great guys. And uh, he talked to us just a little bit about the the new second edition. Mm -hmm. And it's more like the difference between like 3 and 3.5 D&D instead of like going to a whole new edition. Sure, sure. Absolutely. So okay. it's just feedback from all the players. 
and the things that the players asked for and wanted and the things that they played and figured out should be fine tuned. So it sounds really cool. Uh, and it's supposed yeah. to be compatible. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to just revamp the whole system. It's a good system. People love it. So why, why, yeah. why change a bad thing? Um, but yeah, that's great. Um, thank you for, for talking to Tomas. He sounds like a really cool dude. I've seen some videos with him on board. So um, I guess this, the, the most important question is, did you tell him about the channel? Did you? Hmm? Of course we did. Hmm? What did you What did you say? Did you say, hey, we're really cool? That's we're grand really baby. Nice. Yep. I told him uh, all the different you know uh, games that they make that that uh, we play live on stream and have posted on YouTube. So who knows? Maybe we'll get a visit. I don't know. Oh man, that would be super cool. I'd love it. Be, if, be right? Awesome. Get some really cool <laughs> people on board. All right. Any of you guys in the um, Avian Facebook group? Because There's, Andrew Gaska is there. I have I have messaged Andrew Gaska and have been a, a big fanboy of his, uh, as he is the main writer for all of the scenarios and all of the cinematics. Love him to death. He really has a has a super handle on Alien canon. So, um, yeah, uh, I think I, I I would love it if I don't know if Andrew is even watching this shit. Then hell, let's let's bring him into a game. I mean, let's get him on board. Do a one shot. That'd be badass. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. I won't be able to do something. Okay. Well, now it's time to say goodnight because we uh, got nothing else to give. <laughs> <laughs> got nothing else to give except uh, <clears throat> thanks for, for being here. And uh, remember, folks, take care of each other. But don't forget to take care of yourselves. See you all soon. Bye, everybody. Hey, be good.